There's public comment. No public comment. The next item of business will be approval of the minutes of August the 18th, 2010. So Are there any revisions or comments? Additions? Or are we perfect? Oh, yeah, there are. Oh, Mr. Yeah. Suiting. Sorry. In a minute. Page five, item number one. Commission comments. Mm -hmm. Number four, as to the beginning of that sentence, the proposed antenna should match the poles color as much as possible, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Number two, to say install plantings instead of brick in the parkways. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, number two, or excuse me, strike comment number one. On number two, take out the words replace the sidewalk. And so it should read install plantings instead of brick in the parkways. And then number three, should read proposed planting should be a continuation of successful planting in phase one, possibly simplified. And number four, grade soil in lieu of installing new curb. Curb, C U R B. Am I going to? Sure. Number four, yes. grade soil in lieu of installing new curb. So you're changing the word back to soil and curve to curb. Page seven, item four, under the motion. Number one, details must be provided. Under two A, strike the words and is acceptable. Two D, strike the words and is acceptable. Six B, strike the words and how it looks. 7B, study the chimney at and its termination at the south elevation. Strike the words as to whether it should have model lines or more of an adjustment. So, 7B, study the chimney and its termination at the south elevation. Strike 7C. Got all that? Okay. 8B, study the scallop dimension, period. A slight enlargement may work better. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Ms. Murray? Yes, one little one on page five. Um, the number, number uh, three. Just the utility vault should be moved so that it doesn't allow partial piece of a lot. Oh. <laughs> P-I-E-C. P-I-E-C. Instead of piece. Thank you, sir. Page five. Are there any other additions or corrections or suggestions? All those in favor of approving the minutes as amended? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? That motion. Sharp abstain. Sharp abstain. Uh, there were two people that... I first did. And then there was a second person who made the motion. No, 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 that, um... No, who seconded the motion? To... Who seconded the motion? Thank you. There you go. <laughs> and then abstain was... Sharp and Drury. Next item of business is the consent calendar. Yes, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. We've got the, the... Okay. The, I'm going to do the, the sign committee mm -hmm. consent calendar for today. Item C at 928 State Street was postponed two weeks at the applicant's request. That was for the Apple store. Item B, 834 State Street was uh, approved as submitted uh, with the note that the monument sign is uh, not, not approved or not acceptable. Um, 
And item C35 West Haley Street was final approval as submitted, and that was for Alchemy Arts Center. And then we, the following app, sign applications were reviewed by Natalie Cope on conforming sign agenda on August 25th and were approved as submitted. And that would be 1111 Chapala Street uh, on Q Financial and the application for 1033 Anacapa Street for American Riviera Bank. Thank you. And then for the consent calendar for Historic Landmarks Commission today, uh, let's see here, sorry. Item A, 1900 La Swain Road was continued two weeks to consent. Item B, 1900 La Swain Road was continued two weeks to consent. Item C, 1111 East Cabrillo Boulevard was final approval as noted. And item D, at 128 East Cannon Perdido Street was final approval as submitted. Uh, consent calendar items, those consent calendar items were reviewed by Commissioner Sharp except items A, B, and C, which were reviewed by Commissioners Sharp and Suiting, and adjourned at 12.45. Thank you. I'll make a motion to approve the Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain? Opposed? That motion carries. The next item will be announcements and continuances withdrawals. The only announcement I have is that you, Chair Naylor, will be leaving at 5 p.m., and then Commissioner Schallenberger will be absent. Uh, Commissioner Suiting will be stepping down from items 7 and 8. I thought they were items 7 and 8 at 35 yes. State Street. Is that correct? Thank you. And then uh, Mr. Lamone has an announcement. Uh huh. Here's Hi. Welcome. Um, I just wanted to give you a quick brief update on the improvement project at Anacapa and Carrillo. Um, the public works staff. Um, went back and, um, based on your direction, have prepared a council report to reflect the additional um, cost in redesigning the intersection per your direction. So that uh, report will be presented to the council on September 14th at their um, council hearing. Uh, I would think this, this commission should be re represented there because they're going to talk about the issue of whether the design should remain as is or the additional expenditure to remove some of the elements that you had opposed. So it's not an appeal, but it's still a discussion about the direction you gave. So may, the council may agree with your uh, direction on how to proceed, but someone should be there to uh, convey your sentiments on the project. Thank you. Do we have a volunteer to convey these sentiments? Someone on the prevailing side? I will try to go, but I think we need more than once. Madam Chair, I will volunteer with trepidation. <laughs> Passion will overcome. Thank you. Madam Chair? Yes. I need to leave by 530. All right. Are there any other announcements from... Yeah. Yes. Area. Um, Should I wait for that? Yes. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll now call for subcommittee reports, Mr. Adams. We'll just. Okay. Um, I attended the Parks and Rec Commission. We were talking about street trees for Brinker Hop. Uh, the process was such that the neighbors had uh, hit a few trees uh, that, they, that they would like on their street trees. And out of those, Three top choices. We chose the. Um, we chose the uh, ginkgo tree, hmm. which is a um, fabulous street tree, and um, there was some a little bit of controversy, but uh, it was on the top of their list, so everything went well. And so the designated street trees on that street are the Washingtonia robusta, which are already there. And, and as, as trees, if they get removed, they can plant ginkgo trees. And that's probably the direction we're going to see it going. Evergreen pear was part of the top picks, but they used those on Bradbury. And so uh, the, um, the Parks and Rec staff d doesn't want to see one type of tree for s street trees. So we went with the ginkgo. And that was approved pretty much on a, by a large majority by the Parks and Rec Commission. And uh, so that's, that's how that went. Thank so. you. 
Are there any other subcommittee reports? Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. I just want to report on some subcommittee activity. Uh, staff has uh, finished the draft report for the uh, Bow River survey and I've passed it back to the committee to do her review. And then we'll ask Louise if she would uh, chance to go over and Oops, and then Don. So that's that's in the process, and uh, we hope to have something for you shortly in terms of results and where we're going with it. Thank you. Good progress. As I understand it, uh, we have a survey subcommittee meeting in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it two weeks? Yes. Okay. For well, me, when do you think maybe you would have yours to have your review done? I should get it done by uh, middle of next week. Okay, and I'll get it. I'll, I'll get it to Louise as quick as possible. I'll do it over the weekend. But if I could interject here, I believe we have a sign committee meeting in two weeks at that same at, time. At, so I told Mr. Lamone about it a little while ago, and he's going to be contacting you. So okay, the, well, this the, is turning the, out to sub, be a real problem. Yes, the, the subcommittee meeting might be at a different time. We'll work through it, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Will. Thank you. Chair. Yes, Mr. Suiting. Um, thank you, Commissioner Adams, for going to the Parks and Rec Commission regarding um, figure out street trees. I was supposed to go, but I had a conflict. Um, also, on 825, uh, the Ellen Conte subcommittee met regarding Mission Village Courtyard. Um, the biggest item that we reviewed was the location of the fountain, um, finding that it was unacceptable, um, tucked up against um, another wall. So we gave them instruction to move it. Um, into more of the open space and place it where it would become um, sort of a node um, on some uh, on about three paths that were uh, proposed. So we'll be seeing that. Thank you. Any other subcommittee reports? Seeing none, let's move to the first item, the historic structures report for 502 Brinkerhoff Avenue. All right. I will have to step down. Oh, certainly, Mr. Sharp. Will you introduce yourselves for the record? And if you'll press the little button there and get a green. Press your button there. Lower one there. Uh, Ron Nye, historian. Justin Van Mullen, Mon Design Architects. William Appleton, Permit Planners. Thank you. Mr. Kovitz. Hey, Madam Chair, uh, as you know from the report, this is part of the office. Uh, it is a contributing property. All the uh, buildings in the break off are at least structure of merit worthy and designated currently as structure of merit as this one is. And as you know, some of the buildings in break off are used commercially. And so there becomes an issue of handicapped accessibility, which is um, considerably, considerably more stringent than would be for any residential use that we would have. So this applicant has come in for a proposed lift. Uh, you had seen this a while back for a handicapped parking space. Uh, which was successfully installed, but now we're going to be looking at it for the lift. The report basically concludes that the lift as proposed will not negatively impact beyond the, you know, negatively impact the resource beyond the class three impact. Um, again, you're, re you're going to be reviewing the report and whether you agree that a lift in that location would be satisfactory. You will be reviewing the actual project once the proposal comes in, uh, the project plans. With that, Madam Chair, I turn it over to you. Thank you. Would the applicant like to add anything to the report or to this presentation? Madam Chair, there's just a little history that I, I want to um, make you aware of. This property has been used for commercial for 20 plus years. Uh, it was sold as a commercial property. It did not have a zoning information report. The client has inherited this uh, issue and we're trying to resolve it the best we can. Let's see, thank you. Are there any questions from the commissioners? Ms. Murray? Yeah, I'm, I was just wondering, uh, just one concern I have, I, I went to visit the, the building 
but one concern I have is that the uh, I'm sorry. Hmm. That's right. Thank you. Yeah, one um, the one concern I had was um, like over here. I noticed. Um, so, is this going to be in front of this window? Are you are you going to remove this window? I I was having a hard time understanding how it's going to work because there's a window here which looks to me like an original window. And so, how how is it going to work? There's a part. Let me show you the lift. Yeah. There's a part of the lift that goes higher than the window, but it's not in front of the window. It's uh, to the side. To give you an idea. There's plenty of colors that we can choose from. There's like five <laughs> So don't let that uh, stop you. Be the lift, and this is the exact yeah, configuration. Right, right. This portion of it would be right here. Okay. And so that elevates up, but we can paint it to we can paint it to blend in with the existing structure. So okay, so the the I mean, I guess I just trying to understand how. So you the the so person you, comes up. You, you come in at at, at, that at grade. Side, yeah. You, you roll in at this point, okay. and then there's a door that's right here, mm -hmm. and that door will open, and they'll come in. They'll come in this way. Right. Okay. Now, and so when, they're, when they park in the, the one you're proposing, they're going to get out of the car, and then what? They're, we're working this out with the building department, mm -hmm. but currently uh, the proposal would be that... Uh, no, it's in the if you we'll go to the go site ahead. plan real quick. Yeah. So we have the option of going through this way, but we're working that out with the planning department and the building department to see if that path of travel is even required. Mm -hmm. and then we also have, from this single parking space, we have the route of the um, sidewalk, and then this yeah. would be the path of travel. From the sidewalk, the path of travel comes to here. Okay. And that's an existing gate and path. Yeah, yeah. The lift is located behind the covered porch. Yeah, the the it, yeah. It, it does, a little bit of it shows. About six inches. Yeah, that's that, and I wanted to see how that will protrude from the porch, yeah. Are there any other questions? I'll ask for comments. Are there any comments about the report? Actually, if I could go back to the question. Yes. Um, the westerly concrete path, that's proposed, correct? I have to go to the site plan. Uh, th th this is proposed? Justin? The uh, path no, existing. The, the yes. gate, that's and there's a path that is existing, existing. Okay. and we're going to have to check to see if it's okay. it's okay. it's wide enough for ADA. We're going to probably have to okay. make some improvements on it. Any other questions? Any comments? One one last bit of information. We did right. try to uh, find a way to create a, a ramp that would work, but uh, the site. Unless it's in the front yard, we couldn't find a way to hunt the ramp. This is a more expensive alternative, but we felt it fit best with the property. Thank you. I look for a motion since there are no more. I'll look a motion to accept the motion. Oh, second. Second.
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. That motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Next item of business is the archaeology report for 216 Natoma Avenue. Yes, Madam Chair, uh, Dr. Glassall reviewed the report and recommends that the construction excavation be monitored and halted if archaeological deposits are encountered uh, until the deposits can be assessed. Are there any questions regarding this report? Are there any comments? I'll look for a motion. I'll move to accept the report. Second. All those in favor? That motion. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain. That motion carries. Next item of business is the 900 block of East Cabrillo Boulevard. We're on the second concept review. While you're getting settled, I'm going to read the motion from the last review. It's continued two weeks with the following comments. The proposal is ideal due to the no. Whoops, no, no. this was changed. Replace. Do you want me to read it? Yes. <laughs> As amended, Mr. Suiting will read the amended uh, comments for this. Okay, install plantings instead of brick in the parkways. Proposed planting should be con a continuation of successful planting in phase one, possibly simplified, and grade soil in lieu of installing new curb. Thank you. Can you introduce yourselves for the record? And Mark Aguilar, Redevelopment Agency. Nancy Rapp, Parks and Recreation Director. Uh, Santos Escobar, Parks Manager. Peggy Burbank with the Redevelopment Agency. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the Commission. Uh, we're back with the East Cabrillo Sidewalks Project Phase 2. And um, in responding, I'll go directly to uh, your comments at the last meeting. Um, you asked that we not include a, a curb along the sidewalk to, to uh, keep the landscaping back, and we've taken that out of the project. Uh, we intend to uh, just simply grade a portion of the adjacent lands, um soil uh, adjacent to the sidewalk, so that's not an issue um, that shouldn't affect uh, any planting. Is that correct, Tom? Okay. Uh, should not affect or require the removal or uh, reinstallation of any plantings. Um, but probably the significant element that's changed um, after the last meeting is rather than uh, proposing uh, permeable pavers in the existing 290 foot long landscape planner that starts at Milpa Street, uh, we've returned with a planting pallet or planting plan um, on the last two pages, second to the last page, I believe, um, which uh, with the assistance with the assistance of uh, park staff um, includes some of the uh, the plantings that were the most or the hardier and more successful ones of this location for phase one between uh, state and Milpas, as well as the recent uh, West Beach uh, landscaping plan. Uh, so we have here before you that plan, and I, I believe that's probably the item you're most interested in. Um, you know, we would still like to express some concerns about the installation of, of planting in this planter versus the permeable pavers uh, due to maintenance concerns. And I have uh, Nancy Rapp, the Parks Director here, would also like to uh, address this issue. Good afternoon, uh, Chair and Committee members. Sometimes I feel like I'm in the position of just being perceived as whining. <laughs> But I, I really want to um, give you some thoughts to consider as you make your decision. In the last two years, the Parks and Recreation has seen a decrease of its general fund support of 28 percent and a 26 percent reduction in workforce. That means our budget for plant replacement in our parks, in our parkways, in our medians 
has been slashed significantly because we will cut supplies over staff and we're hurting all over. And that makes it a challenge and you can look and see the condition of the plantings along Cabrillo. Um, they're still behind low fences so it protects most of it. But in the last budget go round, council cut the support for the maintenance of Cabrillo Boulevard um, and the loss of a position which they did in fact decide to support. So the loss of the position um, will remain but the loss of the funding to replace plants is cut. So while I realize that your role is very different, your role is to design what you think is appropriate for the city, it's really hard to get the emails from people in the community that accuse us of you know installing and not being able to maintain what's there and we really want to do more than we can but we can't so what I would ask is that maybe there's a compromise in here maybe the possibility of using the permeable surface for a greater portion of the landscape bed and reduce the landscaping to the more prominent locations, um, you know, your decision, but around the Cabrillo Pavilion or right at the foot of Milpas, something where it makes a real statement. And then to put in the permeable surface, which is removable, that we could revisit in better times because we are responding to an economical situation here that we all hope will change in the next few years. But it is very hard for us to sit here and support adding new landscape areas when we cannot maintain what we have. And, and it just is increasingly difficult and very hard. So. I'm hoping that maybe there's a compromise here. I, I do again respect that your role is to approve a design that you think truly reflects the beauty of Santa Barbara, but the beauty of Santa Barbara is not currently being sustained by the general fund. So with that, and, and uh, Mr. Escobar Santos is here to answer any questions that you may have, but that's really what I wanted to share with you and it's kind of the reality that we live with on a daily basis trying to make it all work so uh, thank you thank you are there any questions from the Commission uh, I, I guess I do <clears throat> uh, given given the planting scheme that that you're providing um, is what type of irrigation is is proposed um, I'm not looking at that sheet but um, is, is this a, a spray system of some kind? Yeah, spray. It, it is spray pretty much throughout the, the parking strip to get coverage. Yes, that's correct. We, we pretty much mimicked exactly what was on the East Cabrillo Phase 1. And then my other question, so the, these plants are the ones that survived the best given the in comparison with the previous uh, parking strip planting on on a previous on the previous project yes that Cabrillo. is correct these are the plants that survived the best and looked the best and that's why we went ahead and just selected these out of that plant palette thank you any other questions Madam Chair, mm -hmm. well, I certainly um, can appreciate the predicament um, funding-wise and um, staff-wise that the Parks and Rec Department is in. Um, is there a possibility of having volunteers maintain um, any of this or doing installation on any of this, or is that even just completely out of the question due to insurance risks or anything like that, or has that been explored? We mentioned it at our last meeting. In regards to this site, that hasn't been explored, but yet in order to get volunteers, we're having just a difficult time getting volunteers to donate time at Sierra General Park, Alice Keck Park. 
We do have a, a large volunteer base at the Rose Garden, but that's a whole different beauty. And so in regards to volunteerism, it's, it's, it's very difficult to get volunteers. Any other questions? If there are no questions, let's go to comments then. Yes, Mr. Dury. I'll have to ask permission from the applicant. Oh, I can I'm speak. so sorry. Before I do that, I, I did get a late request for uh, public comment, and I, I should have taken that. DeForest, I want to uh, reiterate uh, Commissioner Suiting's uh, exploration of volunteer help. I know they, I know volunteers do help in uh, Alice Keck Memorial Gardens, Alice Keck Park Memorial Gardens. I also know uh, that uh, the Men's Garden Club has in it maintained the uh, triangle of at the uh, state and um, I don't know it was, uh, what state and Verde Vista. thank you and uh, then the Mission Canyon Association does the one on uh, Alameda Paracera and uh, Laguna Street there by the mission uh, and I think with sufficient publicity people might be uh, you might get uh, volunteers and support. Also, would it be possible for to tie in with or get support from the group that uh, has the uh, street uh, and the street vendors on Sunday? Uh, they certainly, I mean, we're giving them a whole <laughs> uh, career boulevard to uh, sell their wares, and uh, maybe they could be assessed to help with the planting. But the, the planting is very important, and it was, it's part of the history of this uh, the parkway is essential to the uh, and by parkway I mean with plants uh, is essential to the look of Cabrillo Boulevard. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Forrest. Now I'll go to comments. I'm sorry, Mr. George. Madam Chair. Oh yes. Oh. Uh, d before you do, uh, um, as far as public comment is concerned, I failed to mentioned to you the last time that we had received one email in support of the project, and I just wanted to draw that to your attention. Oh, I believe it's you. copied in your packets today. No. no? Would, you, <laughs> would you like me to read the email? Then? Yes. It's not we'll too long. Yes. Okay. What th this is from uh, Frank and Linda Jamali, who have a townhouse down in that neighborhood. It says, what a thrill to read about this project. The sidewalk on West Cabrillo is absolutely beautiful, and I am sure this one will be also. Question thought on their questions, thoughts on this project. Any chance at all uh, of a beautiful mosaic mural that could be incorporated similar to what was done with West Cabrillo? Maybe it could be a depiction of the children playing at the beach and the activity of the volleyball court and the historic beauty of the bathhouse. It could possibly be done by the children of the community like the mural at McDonald's on Milpas and the mural at the airport. Children's art is so pure and beautiful. What a special joy that would be for the whole community. So very nice to see the areas in Santa Barbara that are most frequented by the visitors to Santa Barbara being beautified for the enjoyment of all. Thank you, Frank and Linda Tamale. Thank you. Madam Chair, yes. I do remember getting that. Oh, email. sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, but, but thank you um, for, for rereading that. Just right. Mr. Drury. I'm sure you did. <laughs> I need permission from the 
applicant because I was not here two weeks ago. Uh, permission to make comments. Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner, we'd be happy to hear your comments at this Thank time. Um, I, I think that um, the comments by the applicant um, should be well taken. Uh, I, I think it would be um, a bit irresponsible to uh, approve a project that was going to um, land the city in deeper um, hot water budget. And I, I think the minimum that sh could be done should be done. And anything can be reversed. I understand if it's if we're de talking about um, permeable pavement, that can be when when economics when the economic situation turns around, that can be um, pulled up and plants planted. But I would like to see something go in that reflects the economic times. Thank you. Madam Chair. Yes. I hope I disagree with Commissioner's comments. Would you like to expound on that? Well, I think this is a city project, and it's just as an example. Um, I do sympathize with the um, Parks and Rec Commission or Parks and Rec Department having difficulty maintaining things. We are not talking about a huge amount of planting um, or a huge amount of uh, maintenance expense, seen as the uh, they have to ma or they are maintaining uh, phase one of this project um, now. Um, and I've got news for you. Um, the economic times are not going to turn around to where we're going to ever go back and change this out to planting if there were pavers put in. It's just not going to happen. Thank you. Other comments? No, sure. Nesp. All right. What's the name? <laughs> <laughs> okay. yes. Madam Chair, yes. <clears throat> I also would like to know if I could comment, even though I wasn't here two weeks ago. Well, Madam Chair, I'll have to think about Mr. Sharp for a moment. <laughs> okay, all right. Yes. Well, I'm not so sure that was a good. Anyway, um, <laughs> I agree with Mr. Suiting. I think that uh, a major, major part of Santa Barbara's income is from the hotels along Cabrillo Boulevard, and that's cited article after article in the local newspaper. And for us to shortchange ourselves for in that respect, I think is uh, uh, really detrimental to that particular source of income. And I certainly would uh, cite Mr. Romasanta, who has taken upon himself to landscape portions in front of his own hotel, and possibly others would do likewise. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Adams. Yeah, um, I, I understand the Parks and Rec's predicament. I'm, I'm, we're all very <clears throat> aware of budget cuts and, and more demands, but <clears throat> the way that we look at the, this is we, we feel strongly that landscape should be included. I, I'm, I like the palette. It, obviously, it's a palette that's been studied and, 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 and looked at and reviewed. Uh, for its hardiness, so I I would approve of of, of the plant material. Um, the other thing I would direct the applicant to do is seek out uh, community groups that do have funding for maintenance purposes for this special project. So you can you can uh, you and and you know there might be an effort on at some point on the part of Parks and Rec to encourage volunteers or or citizen funding uh, of the maintenance. I, I think it's the maintenance, it seems to me, is going to be the biggest cost down the line. So I would really encourage you to contact community groups that do this type of partnership funding to help you with that maintenance thing. We, we, would, be, we would be remiss if we didn't ask for landscaping on, on, on this very important boulevard. So um, the, the, that's our charge. That, that's, that's the aesthetics we look at, and that's what we want. Any other comments? Madam Chair, I make a motion for final approval as submitted. Second. second with the papers? No, no papers. That's been mo moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? That motion carries. Thank you. The next item of business is 34 West Victoria Street. This is here for preliminary approval. It requires compliance with Planning Commission Resolution 00910. Ooh. Thank you. There's the 
Oh, there, yes. Continues. Oh. Okay. No, we don't have an applicant. We keep telling them. <laughs> 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 Why would you want to do that? <laughs> we can break for five minutes. Okay. Victoria Street. Will you introduce yourselves for the record? Going back down. Okay. Oh. Will you introduce yourselves for the record? Martha DeGases from Arcadia Studio. Thank you. Thank you. Joe Andrelitis. Thank you. Brian Cornell. Before you start, I am going to read our comments and the Planning Commission comments so that the commissioners can be brought up to speed. In October of 2009, yes, you had your fifth concept review. No, except it was July, wasn't it? October. Okay. Continued indefinitely to the Planning Commission with positive comments. I believe that was our last. Yep. Thank you. The applicant's sensitivity and responsiveness to the Commission's requests and comments is appreciated. There have been continuous improvements to the project. The project is in compliance with the required compatibility findings in terms of the mass bulk and scale, including the reduction of the third floor mass on the east and west elevation, its sensitivity to the adjacent landmark, and the architectural character of the design. The concerns among some commissioners about the Central Paseo Bridge, the landscape design, and other details will be resolved in future reviews. In terms of the Planning Commission resolution, approval is subject to the following conditions. Minimize the visual effects of paving. Textured or colored pavement shall be used in the paved areas except the underground parking garage. I'll forego the reasons why. Screen check valve backflow. The mural, pure the pro per the project description and as described in the Historic Structures Report, the existing mosaic mural shall be removed and reinstalled on site according to a plan approved by the Historians of Record and the HLC. The bicycle parking signage. Signage for bicycle parking locations shall be provided on site near the main points of access to the bicycle parking, such as the elevators. It may be incorporated into the project directory or as pro separate signage. Bicycle parking provides secure bicycle parking spaces on the first floor of the development for residents and customers to facilitate bicycle use. For residential bicycle parking, it is preferred that at least a portion be provided in bicycle lockers, a bicycle room, or similar covered and lockable storage on the first floor of the residential development, if deemed aesthetically appropriate by the HLC. At least 50% of provided on-site commercial bicycle parking fish shall be ground-mounted ranks, racks, and if possible, located in a common area outside of the parking garage. Paseo. Restudy the Paseo widths in the area near the southwest corner of the Arlington Theater, that is between the garage ramp residential units and Arlington Theater, to facilitate pedestrian movement. Five feet as currently provided is inadequate. The market entrance. The applicant shall work with the HLC to further study the southeast or the canted corner of the market, possibly pulling back that feature to provide a larger view corridor. And the last comment was landmark or structure of merit designation. Owner shall submit his application to the HLC 
for designation of the mosaic mural as a city landmark or structure of merit as determined appropriate by the historian at HLC and shall waive their right to object to such a designation. So Marge Caffarelli is has joined us. Also, I should mention Pam Post and Tim Hazeltine, our historians are here. Um, we are here for preliminary approval, and what we've done is uh, submitted the actual set that the Planning Commission looked at, and I thought I would just review very quickly what you all looked at at your last HLC review so you can kind of get a sense of what you looked at then, and, and I'll kind of, as we go through this, I'll change. The parking garage underneath is very similar to what you looked at. The only difference is we actually switched between then and now where the residential, the residential parking is now on the upper level and the commercial is now on the lower level and we had it the opposite way before. Um, as far as the site plan is concerned, there are a lot of similarities. You'll notice, the, I, I will point out the biggest, uh, um, some of the differences, We this actual, this overall uh, market width reduced by about 18 inches. Let me get my cheat sheets on this, and I'll point this all out to you when we go through it. The market lost about 500 square feet. The commercial here lost just a minor amount, 62 square foot. The residential shrunk by about 1,500 square feet from what you were looking at. We did uh, reduce this dimension. It went from, um, let's see, 20, where is it? Thank you went from 35 feet to 25 feet, and that was in large part because of having to account for the square footage. Um, for, for Marge, I will tell you, it's been, from day one, it's been critical for her that she build the commercial square footage that's on the site, plus the 3,000 square foot of, of measure small addition, and so because we had to count uh, a lot of the square footage of like the the mechanical down in the basement and you know everything that's counted in measure e some of the service areas um, that dimension changed um, the it, it, I was actually amazed at how similar things were in terms of in terms of the similar um, dimensions this this uh, Paseo actually increased a little bit from 22 feet to, to 23 and a half feet. Um, and we had a little bump out here that reduced this uh, dimension, I think, by about from seven and a half feet to six feet. So it's been fairly minor. Um, the elevations that you all looked at, starting with um, Chapala, Victoria. You'll notice when I show you the new elevations, some changes, particularly in these facades here. And the rear elevation, which is abutting the Arlington, the new Paseo, and then the side elevation. And then finally, you'll notice that we had one, one site section where we were calling out at that time a height of of 40 feet for the overall building. And we can refer back to these if we, if we want to. Thank you, Martha. I made a mess of that. So a lot of work goes in after we got positive comments from you to get the DART application accepted. Probably the most significant amount of work was just really planning out all of the units with a little bit more in a little bit more detail. So this is that um, condition that I, I mentioned reduced in depth or in width. This actually reduced again in, in width. So this uh, chamfer here that was mentioned in the Planning Commission minutes actually did pull back by the 18 inches from the last time you looked at it. You can see that little pop out that I mentioned previously right here, but the the footprint is is very much substantially changed. These are the areas that got counted as commercial square footage, the trash enclosure areas, um, and that's why we ended up pushing that out. 
parking garage you don't care about, but again, the residential is now up here and the commercial is down there. We provide um, bicycle storage down here, and this is one of the things that I think is relevant to the, your, uh, the commission comments is to make these so they aren't wall-hanging type units, but ground-mounted, which we'll be able to do by moving that door. So that will help that. And then the Planning Commission's comments about the bike storage. We have the bike storage down here for the residential, and they wanted some of it to be up at the main level. So first floor, I don't think you probably care too much about the floor plans of the units. Yeah. While we're on that elevation, Brian, uh, is there any bike parking on that first floor? Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and why don't I just jump right into this. I have a little package of how we're going to respond to the Planning Commission. So you guys can keep that because I'll come back to it. But the first item is on the bike, bike parking. What we're going to do is take this male storage room, as you can see there, and turn that into a convenient bike parking with 12 spaces that will be accessed off that lobby Paseo. So that will reduce a little bit of landscape area by providing that, that pathway, but it seemed like the most sensible and convenient. We didn't really want to take it out of any of this Paseo courtyard area in here, and that was the one area that we could afford um, the room. I also want to reiterate, I don't know if you recall, but we have designed this trash enclosure uh, area here to accommodate the trash of our neighbors on the other side of the Paseo. So, you know, if you if you walk up there any any day of the week, you'll see their trash cans out in that Paseo. So, uh, Marge has communicated with all those uh, neighbors, and we've sized that accordingly. Second floor plan. You know, if. You recall my whole discussion about sort of the view topography and how we kept one story at the street with the exception of this two-story massing. And, of course, we worked very hard working on the massing and, and these units, which are behind that, trying to pull these in to minimize any obstruction to the Arlington. So all of that has remained um, pretty much as you saw it. This is the new Victoria Street elevation. So modified this to just to create a little corner balcony element and, and revised um, this piece. Um, this has remained really the same except it extended slightly. Um, and we've just refined, obviously, as when you go through these with the larger elevations, We've refined where the fenestrations are. Still a lot of refinement to do. You know, I should mention also that it's clear to us for a project like this, we're going to need to come back to you in progress several times in advance of final approval. And you know, you, you may want to think about doing a subcommittee to work with us if that makes sense. Because you know, we know you know a project like this of such scale, it's not it's not right to come back with just a big giant set of drawings and expect you to approve it. Um, this elevation has not really changed much since you looked at it. Again, the entrance off of uh, Chapala to the market. These will be roll-up glass doors so that when the market is operating, the it's it's just an open market in the tradition of an old public market, and then they will close for security at night. The back elevation, I'm going through the perimeter elevations first. The back elevation facing the Arlington, we've articulated this quite a bit from the last time you looked at it, maintaining some of these balcony elements and enhancing this piece here, actually, you'll, you, if you look closely at the plans, you'll see there's various building heights. And building height is measured from existing grade. So um, I'll show you in a section, um, a similar section to what I showed you on the last approval. But this little piece of roof is the highest part of the project, and that roof 
measures 44 feet from existing grade to the peak of that roof. And that is, that's just simply been extruded up to get some variation in this roof line. The primary roof height, yeah, and there's a t there's, that's the elevator tower for the residential. So that is the, that is taller, but actually when you measure that from existing grade, it's a little bit shorter than the 44 foot height here. This is the elevation um, facing that Paseo that backs up to the stores along State Street. The residential entrance here, the entrance or the door to the trash enclosure area. And then this building height is actually measures 39 foot 9 inches from existing grade and that's the consistent section was what I showed you before. Um, so that that plate height yields essentially a 40 foot height in some other areas when measured from existing grade it measures around 40 foot 11 inches but we've really tried to to keep that height as reviewed the last time we saw you and then without going through um, well I guess I can just go through all of these real quickly the section that shows you that parking structure step this this articulates the lobby with that bridge element at the third level. And this, um, of course, is one of the courtyard elevations in that central courtyard space. This is the, shows the ramp, the side of the market uh, on the Paseo that are, is closer to Chapala. And this little connection here, um, is the other condition. I may as well just jump right into that now in this package. You can see this plan. So let me, if you'll keep that spot for me, that would be great. Let me go back to first floor, second floor, first floor. So this was the concern of the Planning Commission that we, you know, we're, we're enhancing this Paseo condition and um, oh, my photos are gone. I don't know if they ended up, oh there, is that, no, well that, that's okay, that shows it, my photos with the, they're probably sitting on my desk, it's my guess. Um, I brought you some pictures of, of other Paseos for comparison, but at any rate, that was their concern. You know, currently, as you know, there's a wall right here next to this stairway. This stairway is about five and a half feet, by the way, or five foot ten inches, something like that, coming out of the Arlington. So that wall goes away, and obviously we widen this whole Paseo. Um, but at this point, we have to go up about two feet from the elevation that exists up to our courtyard level. And, of course, then we go back down steps to the Victoria Street entrance. So they wanted us to look at this. So this is the solution that I have come up with that sits like that with the, this being a 5% a ramp. Um, that comes up to that makes that grade difference and it's actually only about 18 inches not two feet as you can see and what we were able to do is to pull this back so that section that I was showing you before we've managed with the clearance to create a little bit more deck in that area and, and what that has actually done, which has helped this, is move the stairway back so it's not quite so elongated. So that elevation replaces that condition. Um, Allison, our planner, um, suggested that you know six feet was not really wide enough or not necessarily meeting the spirit of that. I obviously, I, what I want to do is maintain planting. This area, by the way, is all in uh, earth. 
so we'll be able to plant it. It's not a raised planter. As soon as you see these walls begin, I need to use raised planter conditions. But it, it's a six foot at its smallest condition. This is looking at that exact um, existing condition. This is the drain that will remain. And that's just a quick little sketch to kind of give a sense of how that's going to work. So it's a fairly gracious pathway, narrows to six feet. Within nine feet, it goes to eight feet, and then, of course, it widens up to, the, to what I have, about 14 feet in this area of the Paseo. So this clearly works a lot better than what we had when we showed it to the Planning Commission as a series of ramps and landings. So that's responding to that comment. And the rest of this, I think, are sections, which I won't bother you with. This actually is within the project, looking back at um, this <coughs> narrow courtyard area that is between the two buildings. So you're looking at this elevation, in other words. These units down at the first floor, by the way, are sort of are, are have the same ceiling height as the commercial, so they're actually kind of split level um, units, and that's why they have this high glass. I can probably show you a section of that if I can find it. This is the Paseo looking. This is the the. Paseo through the middle of the project, looking at the elevator tower, looking back. Basically, this will be the entrance to the lobby <coughs> of the residential. We kind of have a, a, little, um, a little seating area, kind of a cloister-like space here. And then, of course, the entrances to those units I was just talking about. A section through the market, which shows the green roof, the clear story into the market space. And then finally, these are the photo sims, which we showed you before, but um, have obviously been refined with the current design. So the, the view looking up um, down Victoria towards Chapala, the Paseo, where we'll get rid of those trash cans, which are there now. In fact, you can see them here in the photograph. so hard to look at photos upside down. From Victoria, this is that, that Paseo, this is the bridge across to the green roof on top of the market. This is just the view looking back, Victoria towards State Street, so you can kind of get a sense of the mountain view associated with that particular view. And then the murals, the view looking at the very back of the Arlington. So here you can see the uh, service area of the market. And then I think our last view, last two views, one is looking back down Chapala at that where the ramp goes down into the project and um, this just illustrates the sale between the Arlington and the project. And that brings me to the landscape plan which I'll let Martha explain briefly. She'll be able to talk about the green roof. But one thing I do want to mention that we had to explain to Planning Commission is, as you know, this, this existing Paseo that connects to the Arlington from Victoria rises up at this point, and here we're about two and a half feet above the grade of our courtyard. So this will be, this, this soil will be at the level of that Paseo as it wraps around and will be retaining the corner of this unit to accomplish that. Um, the landscape's 
virtually unchanged from the last time that you reviewed it. And just to recap, we've got our street tree selection per the um, city street tree um, committee that's approved there. So, and what are those? Let me just um, try and remember. Okay. <laughs> um, so, eucalyptus, salmonofolia, salmon gum. It's a new one to me. Pardon me? Apparently it does. It's a new plant to me, but it's the one that the Street Tree Committee has decided on and decided that we'll have there. So it's a smaller scale tree to be in scale with the um, planting space and so on. So, so hey Martha? Yes. Speak in the microphone. Sorry. So, um, that Do you remember what these are? Those are the Brazilian wood cedar tree, cedar. the Brazilian cedar wood tree. So clearly, the street tree committee is trying to get some diversity in our tree uh, component downtown. So um, those we've placed along there. We have a, a limited planting area in front of the mural, and again, colorful, low-growing, drought-tolerant shrubs um, along there. And and we're gonna, by the way, I want to just re remind, mm -hmm. we're going to use the stone that is on the site and on the market for the stone plinth that is going to come along Chapala and elsewhere where we have stone. So we're going to really mimic the way the, the uh, wall currently is the foreground of those murals. We may dig up a ton of stone. We may, yeah. <laughs> um, at the entry to the Paseo, the market entry is flanked by palm groupings. And then we have the larger planting space in ground here for the um, um, feature tree that we have proposed there. Sycamore. For the sycamore. Uh, <laughs> or maybe something else by that time. We're, we're kind of going back and forth on that. Um, pretty formal planting along in front of the commercial units. And then as we come up the um, Paseo's Again, formal arrangement of raised planters, um, palms, citrus trees, etc. So we're trying to create just that good paseo so atmosphere through the, the all right, the bicycle. Path. Yeah, so we're coming through the path there, but we can flank there. Marge was just mentioning we may, you know, in order to secure the entrance to that bike parking, we may actually put another gate back at this point. You know, I, oh, I it was also a comment at planning commission. Yeah. We do have gates. The gates to the residential courtyard area are here, 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 and then, of course, at that at that main lobby. Uh, and as we come up again to the second level here, again, flanking palms, citrus trees, dwarf trees, etc. So just a nice um, uh, kind of a lot of texture, a lot of variety in the planters here, but... Um, Again, looking toward drought tolerance and so on. Um, along the back... Relocated Canary Island. Right, to... Um, again, I think those show in the elevation. The yeah, there. we're um, transplanting those Canary Island palms there. They're quite nice on site. Um, adding some cordyline um, plants in the corner there to kind of reflect the character of the palms, but give some height in that smaller planting area and something that won't block the views of the Arlington from Chapala Street. Um, so through the back paseo here, a little fountain element and so on, raised planters. And along the back paseo, we've got a very dense planting of the Washingtonia palms, queen palms, and brahea palms, um, that sort of thing. And then... Um, a series of smaller canopy trees. We have a set of olives flanking this paseo and um, some Pittosporum filioides and Pittosporum rhombifolium, that sort of thing. So clean, evergreen trees that will grow in the narrower spaces there, um, but still give a nice sense of tree canopy over the paseos. Um, the green roof elements on the upper floor, we have... Um, a reduced kind of area of lawn for sort of a recreational flavor. We've got the canopy trees and the raised planters in a formal arrangement, benches um, throughout. And then on the edges we have, and around the clerestory skylight, we've got a 
pretty typical green roof palette of sedums and that sort of thing. So the only lawn or turf area will be this uh, rectangle that is embracing that tree canopy there. And we've also talked about some of this area being used for a little organic garden for the residents. So this, of course, is their club room space. Uh, for the residents and also there's a potential for a farmer who may be selling produce in the, the public market to actually plant on the green roof and sell what is grown on the green roof. While we're looking at this, what are these trees? Uh, the trees that we're planting on the roof, we're talking about Metro Sideros, Tomentosa, and then we're um, thinking of the crepe myrtle for the um, colorful trees there, one of the uh, mildew-resistant varieties. Are we done with the presentation? I think we are. Okay. I'm going to ask for public comment. The first person shall be Mr. DeForest, and after him, Mr. Lang. Kellum DeForest. I have some comments that one is the green roof, which is fine as an idea, it looks very handsome. My problem with it is its visual impact uh, to the city. If it's got trees, it, it looks rather odd having trees up in the air. Uh, it, there'll be people, umbrellas, the, this farmer that's farming it, that it, 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 I don't think it fits the, uh, no, there are no green roofs uh, talked about in the EPV guidelines. So also, uh, just a minor thing, I haven't seen what, on the east side of the parking ramp, I have been advocating that there be a, a, a fence rather than a wall. So the Arlington from the, as much of the Arlington building could be seen from Chapala Street as possible. Uh, this bike parking requirement is something new and it seems to be a sacrificing the design uh, of the of the building by putting buildings in the uh, or a structure in the middle of the circulation that was originally behind the uh, between the stores and the uh, uh, condos. Well, also, it seems to me, looking at these pictures, that the views through the um, the, ver the the um, from Victoria Street down the uh, uh, opening spaces seem to be less than was originally depicted. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lang. Please. Where did I put my Yes, uh, it may be that my question's already answered. I live a half a block away across Chapala uh, on the second floor of the Edgerly, and I like looking out at the top of the Arlington. And uh, it's amazing to me how uh, a building this tall can still be so small beneath the Arlington. So I guess I just was mistaken about that. Uh, it's... Uh, and all the depictions you show, there's still plenty of, of view of the of the top of the Arlington. So perhaps that's the end of that inquiry. I guess I missed the um, split second that you had the sight poles. I was going to ask you if you had seen those. It would be nice if uh, you put those up again, maybe, just so we can see. But uh, uh, I guess you've got uh, quite a bit of space up there. Yes, Mr. Uh, um, the question on the, uh, the green 
extensive roof planting system. What is the height of that above, I guess, the the paving and below the parapet? What, what's the relationship there, Mr. Gothis? Let's think. Um, so that... Would you like me to ask the question a different way? No, I understand what you're asking. Um, the parapet height, and Brian, I, you're going to have to help me with this because the well, parapet height at that. from let's the. Let's go ahead and look at the section. Uh, so the parapet would have to be 42 inches. And then these areas are raised. I think we, I think we made them three feet. Okay. The soil but the extensive roof planting, which so, is adjacent to the parapet, what's yeah, that relationship? So, um, is that at the pavement grade, or is that raised? Yeah, it'll be at the pavement grade, and I. There's nothing here. There's nothing adjacent. This is just this is just the sedum here. Right. Right. That's right. It's, that's it's what level. Yeah. It's so, meant so to be level with. The, okay. So it, so it's not a raised plant. So you don't yeah. see that from yeah. the street no, at all. No, not at all. Like a typical okay. Okay. Roof. Okay. okay. No, I understand what it is. Yeah. Thanks. Are there any other questions from the commission? Yes, Mr. Curry. Particularly contrary today. I don't know why. Um, if, a, if an international gang of mural thieves came tonight <laughs> and stole the murals, not to be ever recovered, <clears throat> would that alter your your design of this uh, the uh, west elevation along Chapala Street? Yes, I think it. I mean, I I think we'd probably put more glass along there. I'm sorry, the murals are ever installed myself um, I don't find them particularly artful that's just a, that's a comment but the next question is um, where is the overlay that shows the <clears throat> west elevation pulled back to expose more of the west facade of the Arlington I was hoping to see that well um, I know that you mentioned that to the Planning Commission um, you know, the only way that that can be done is to take square footage out of the market. And that's, that's the challenge. That's the rub. Because that, uh, that back of market is, um, is loading zone and, and uh, that... Uh, it's not loading. What's it's equipment that, and well, that's, trash. Okay, yeah. Machinery. Yeah. Thank you. Adam. Yeah, um, let's let's look at where the where the bridge the on the second floor. Let's just look at that design because uh, I wasn't clear on where that's at right now. Well, we have two bridges. This bridge two bridges. At, the bridge at the second floor, which serves the green roof, you can see in that Victoria oh. Street elevation, and also in the rendering. Let me go to it quickly. I can find it quickly. There. So that's the that's the second story bridge to the green roof. And then the third story people walk the lower level. Yeah, that's a that's a handrail. Or yeah, that's a guardrail height, that's correct. Guardrail height. Mm -hmm. And then the third floor bridge is sh shown here. So the idea here is that it would have a wrought iron railing and then a plaster uh, arch with some detail of the legs of the arch. And that obviously, you know, through our design development is going to be refined. Any other questions? I do have a question. Could you go back to, you were saying that at some point, I think it was this width was 35, but you minimized it to 25? Yeah, it was, when you looked at it, it was 35 and it's 25 now. That's that's correct. You want to see the old? Yeah, I would like to see the old one. Let's go. I apologize that it's at a different Sorry. scale. So here's what we had. Yes, 
so you can kind of get a sense in relationship to that third floor wall, which is here. And I'm assuming that this, this story also? No, um, no, no, this no. This is where it was? Yeah, this that's is... where it was. It's just that commercial mm -hmm. square footage that reduced the width of that sale. And you can also see here, you can compare what we did in terms of these elevations. Yes, in fact, the enclosure of yeah, this no is not... It's my other question, was what did we see before in terms of that opening okay. that we were looking for to... Well, uh, yeah, the opening the opening to here is really through, is, is from the one story portion through this bridge so depending on where you are standing along there you know depends on what that vantage point is if you are if you're standing right on the sidewalk adjacent to the project looking back up you see you have a clear shot underneath that bridge to the the, the balcony and then it's, and then standing back further it obviously changes you know the dynamic of it changes but in another way from the from the street, from the sidewalk, you are no longer looking at that open view of that of that uh, fountain. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that the intent was that that was going to be open through. I mean, we always, you, and we may not have. That that back area is raised six feet, so you would never really be able to see it. I mean, I think this may have just been that you know that we didn't put that we didn't put that glass, but this was always the lobby. And then what Joe is mentioning is this is four feet above the elevation here, so there was always a a grade difference, which is that grade difference between the Arlington and Victoria. So we're in we're in which part of this this. Um, uh, I mean, as far as as far as seeing it free and clear, the the side of the Arlington free and clear. Besides, obviously, being back in here, it would be in this courtyard mm -hmm. space. And that's the private side, right? That's all. But you're going to be able to see through. Let's go ahead and look back. Uh, because I think that was one of the main issues of opening the project was that key key section from this side of, of Victoria Street to have that uh, sense of feeling of that you are seeing that, that elevation of the Arlington. Well, we opened that view, Brian. Let me first go back to that section so that it's clear what's happening. So here is that four foot difference between the, the grade. And you can see we're actually sloping this up to that lobby, so it's a little less than four feet between the lobby elevation and that courtyard. So that, that view always was intended to be the view across the top of this roof. In other words, it wasn't through this lobby space oh. that it's that it's that view across the top of the roof to those balconies did we have a section in the old set that showed yeah. us i don't think you had this section we never had a section showing us that internal not in the old it wasn't in the old set no but we did if you recall we showed you, you that through. that movie sure. where we you know looked at it and then moved back down the, the entrance to the city parking lot uh, and then back forward again. This was the yeah, I remember that view, the video shot. And the intent was to replace the bridge so that yeah. it was actually forward so that if, if, if we were to move it back, it would actually block that balcony. So the intent was to move the bridge forward so when you walked along the sidewalk, you can see under the bridge and see the balcony on the side of the Arlington. So we didn't show that as no, glass. No, you didn't show it as glass. That's yeah. very clear to me. Yeah. We thought it was open, and yeah. we thought it was a clear shot right. through. That's well, you can see this is the, the wall that would... Oh, yeah. yeah. But it's very different to be open like that as opposed to have a wall of glass. 
Well, so that was the extent of my questions. Are there any other questions? Yeah. Um, on, this, on this schematic here, um, just to clarify, the the low wall or curb material is, is what? Is that concrete or any any thoughts? Maybe you're not at that well, no, level of detail. The, the thought that all, all these planter walls are stone, and I actually in, the my, stone. in okay. my little sketch I showed is stone. Now I got gotcha. you. You know, on the on the back side of this parking ramp, we may we may not want to do all the stone. We mm -hmm. haven't finished thinking. I got gotcha. you. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions from the commissioners? There are none. Let's go to comments. Madam Chair. Yes. Um, on the roof deck above the market, I think that the um, trees that are being proposed are too large. Um, where I'm going with that is um, typically in a roof garden, you don't see the trees. Um, they're either cloistered or the, the planting comes right to the edge and spills over. So it's either or, but to see trees coming up out of sort of nothing or, or, or a roof is, is um, strange and, and incongruous with um, what would typically be seen. Um, and then on the northwest Paseo, um, I think you've got a solution there, Brian, um, but I think that this is a little bit too shoehorned. I'm talking about the proposed solution in the packet. It's a little bit too shoehorned in there. Um, and, and it is just to get you from point A to point B. Um, it needs a little bit more charm, a little bit more study um, as how to do that. I honestly almost like the um, original solution better here, uh, being that that would be pulled back some now, too. I mean, pull that back, but just let, the, let this be. Let that, let that continue. Yeah, exactly. More rational is a good description. Um, either that or this needs um, a whole lot more charm. That's all. Um, I'm just going to follow up those comments. Um, <clears throat> I absolutely agree with Commissioner Suiting on on the trees. It's also I want to mention the the trees, the Metro Sideros and and the crepe myrtle. I I feel like those are are dark green masses, and I I think that the kinds of trees that could work on that second floor roof are fruit trees. They could be trees that are sort of filtered uh, foliage in the way that they seem more open. In fact, I would, I would, you know, this is just a, a, a thought, but you have olives down here. I, I, would, I would put the lighter colors maybe up higher, the darker colors, say the Metro Sideros, down lower. It's sort of a you know, I'm, I'm just not understanding the progression of like dark green on top and and sort of gray green and filtered and, and lightness on on the bottom. Um, so I'm just asking you to really study that. I I think that when things go up in the air, there should be more open, more filtered light. And then the other point I want to make is the um, sycamore placement. That is going to be the signature tree. For the whole project, so whether that's you know a sycamore or something fantastically gracious, possibly like a a, a special species of Quercus or something that that I mean that is just a signature tree, and it should really be, I think, rooted in the culture of of Santa Santa Barbara somehow. I I would prefer that to be a great native tree because that is going to be a signature tree and there's so much exoticness going on because of the street tree committee. I'd like to see us ground us to the the place we call Santa Barbara in in some way. So it, that's a very important tree. And then um just to be clear you you the sycamore may be okay. Yeah, yeah. No, sycamore is great, fabulous. If you could find, you know, I I always like the idea of a sycamore, but you know, whatever it should be, just a great, um, a great specimen there. And then um, the other point I was going to make is that that solution for the Paseo, it you know, if it, uh, Commissioner Sudi had a great suggestion that needs to really respond to the architecture. It's somehow the the curve and the kind of narrowing pathway it doesn't work. So that should be. Restudied in a more geometric yet open way. Um, it's just the design I'm seeing just doesn't 
j- just doesn't fit. It, you know, it's an interesting solution. You're on the right track, but I think it needs to respond to the geometry of the buildings and the spaces around it. Um, also, and I'm I'm just going to throw this out as instead of wrought iron, maybe there could be a wood approach to the bridges. I'm not sure. It's just you may have explored that, but I think uh, we want those bridges to be as transparent as possible. Yet <clears throat> there could be a solution in some really fine timber making those upper story crossings. I feel that um, I feel that the the arch bridge is is just a little um, I don't know it's too heavy it seems too blocky for that view back toward the Arlington I think that needs to be studied I mean it's not You're talking about the third the one at the third floor the upper bridge the the one that goes across to the second floor oh this, this yeah I yes. I just find that too bulky and I don't know why it's so bulky because again we. Again, I would say the more open and transparent that is, the better that might be. I mean, I know it's narrow, but you know, there's still a lot of stucco there. That's this piece. This. I'm just concerned that I'm concerned that that stucco is that it's not the full opportunity to make that as transparent as possible. Uh, anyway, I just asked you to study that. And um, I, you know, I really appreciate the the bike parking and what you've done with that. I think um, you've you've hidden it. Um, if we sacrifice a small palm, I think it's worth having bike parking. I think that was a a, a good solution. And I, I think my main comment, I think the planting on the second story roof deck need, needs the most work. So, thanks. Any other comments from commissioners? Madam Mr. Chair, <clears throat> I'm concerned, and you probably haven't finalized the design, about the roll-up windows that are going to be able to close down the market at night. Uh, I think that that has to be very traditional to be effective and it can't be some normal glazed garage door that we see so much of and it it, it, it the design of that's very important to me um, possibly to integrate your new ramp into the structure you could explore radiusing that unit and having this gracefully uh, mirror that which would further open up the Arlington view as you're coming down that paseo looking back at the Arlington I don't know how much of uh, this has been blessed by the Planning Commission but I'm still concerned about the lack of uh, the view of the Arlington at that chamfered opening to the market and I know how important the square every square foot is to you but moving this back several feet does not reduce the amount of square feet that much but it does do a lot for being able to look back as you're coming up Chapala and turning right on Victoria Street and I having reduced by 10 feet the opening is further back concerns me also and again I don't know how much of that was looked at by the Planning Commission and uh, how they felt about that but and I've made this comment before and especially about the chamfered the 45 degree we moved it back for you 18 inches no no we moved it more than that along the way during the five reviews and uh, but the building now has followed it even more that's across the Paseo. So it, uh, I just am concerned about that, as always. Would this have 
It's right down there. Uh, no, the one below. Yeah, this one, yeah. Do you hear the right. right. I'm just asking you to consider moving that back to allow that opening to be widened. That's all. Yeah, I just, you know, if I, if I can, just very quickly, since we're on this sheet, you know, the thing I think this shows is that, obviously, even if I move this back, even if I pull it back significantly, I'm not going to change the view of the Arlington because of the massing that is beyond. Yeah. You know, that has increased by no, 10 no, feet. No, no, no. Huh? This hasn't. This no. hasn't. This massing of the building, in other words, the. Oh, the commercial building I'm no, talking about. No, the residential, about. in other words, the roof line of the residential is what defines what you see of the Arlington there. Right so here, even if I pull. Even if I pull this back, I'm not going yeah, to change I'm the view of the Arlington. I would open up. I would open up the Paseo view, but it's not going to increase the view of the Arlington. Depends on what part of the Arlington we're talking about, looking at. But nevertheless, that, uh, my comments. Yes, Mr. Jacobus. I know I did say something about this the last time about the fenestration is going to make or break this project, and some of the. Um, Exterior elevation drawings that we saw in here were, were quite ch charming. Um, but going to what uh, Don Sharp was getting at regarding those openings for the market, there, there are historic precedents for bifolding glass doors. I studied several markets in Santa Barbara that have, had them back in the 20s. The idea was that once they were pocketed, the market was open to, to the fresh air and the, the stuff kind of spilled out to, to the street. But we do have precedent for that if they wanted to explore that type of door versus one of those overhead coil up type of things. And I can provide uh, some historic photographs of that if you would like to have them. Yes. It seems to me that the suggestion that was made that a subcommittee be appointed to, to work on this as it goes along is a good one, and uh, because it's worked so well, I guess, with uh, with uh, Ellen Canto. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's just something we might consider. Thank you. Madam Chair? Yes, uh, Another Sorry. comment from me. Um, the the Paseos, the walkways, I think they could um, have um, quite a few more potted plants in them. Just, you know, tuck them in corners, wherever, and just sort of give it some more character. Uh, we still need to see designs of, in progress designs of, of, of many aspects that uh, they are in conceptual, uh, expressing it conceptually, and uh, I think most uh, the, the commission agrees with most of what's been shown, but uh, there's a lot of details to be worked out, and uh, I think that we were, I, I think the idea of the subcommittee is good. Uh, the, the applicant probably would like to, to get some nod in terms of mass bulk and scale and move on to, to working drawings, and, and that seems to be a, a reasonable request. The only uh, uh, I like. I agree with Mr. Sharp on, on the uh, uh, approach to the uh, the ramp. I, I kind of like the the right angle uh, dual ramps as shown previously. I think they are they are awkward, and some kind of a massaging of that corner will work well. But also, there's a whole series of other things that need to be uh, worked on on committee before getting a final approval. So I, I think we should be moving in that direction. The only major comment is, is, is the angle of, of that uh, of the marketplace, the the, the, uh, the 45 degree facade, and uh, maybe we should take a straw poll, or, and, and so we can move this forward. It, it just seems like all the other the other uh, comments are, are, are minor and are, are detail oriented. I don't think we're done with comments, but are there any other comments, Mr. Drury? Um, the northwest corner of the market, the northeast corner of the market, and, and then the ramp going into the parking area, I think that if it can't be reduced in size, if it can't be drawn back to show the Arlington, it needs to be uh, less obtrusive or intrusive architecturally. It needs to somehow um, 
not look like it's been it's been um, stuck in this place and not reflective of the architecture of this big building that it's um, encroaching on. So I I I don't know what the what the um, deal breaker square footage is for the market. I would love to have that that market place drawn back eight or ten feet. If that's not uh, doable for the for the uh, applicant, then I'd like to see some um, ideas explored for architecture that that fits the Arlington um, the part of the Arlington that's being obscured. And I I would uh, heartily concur with the commissioners who suggest a a subcommittee. I think that's a good way to go. Thank you. Thank you. I, I want to express my support for the public art mural. Um, I think this is a good good approach. Uh, it's uh, I don't know. Uh, it's it's a uh, it's of historic interest, and uh, I would hope that the app applicants looking at um, somehow getting that de designated as a structure of merit. It is. Manager, it is. Is a condition of approval, and it was found to be landmark worthy in the structures report. Right. Okay. Mr. Um, I I find it somewhat odd that three sides of the open are you know we have so much open on the market, but yet no way to access it through some of those open points. We have a, a, an access point on Chapala. We have a, a decent access from um, Victoria and from the lower plaza. But the, the, the portion of it that's behind Planter, there's no way to access that from the sidewalk. And I would almost prefer to see some, some maybe not all, permanent glazing there um, just so that we have some some It just seems I, I'm struggling with there, there not being any access from the sidewalk where we have a whole open wall. Um, I like the idea of the open air market. I think um, that's typical. But what what those open air markets were were they were connected to the sidewalk, so you could come in and out of them. You obviously have control points that you're going to need to you know have, you know you're going to have to have a cashier everywhere where people can you know come in and out. Of the building, but it seems it's it seems also just so odd. You, just so you know, Phil, it's also the it's if you look at the survey, Mr. you'll see Carnell. it's it's surprising how much Victoria slopes into that corner. Yeah. So my you my access points are at Victoria where I've got it, and yeah. then on Chapala where I've got it, and it drops yeah. down to the corner in both. And I'm not suggesting that you provide access from the sidewalk because I know the great difference is you can't. Um, but maybe some of maybe some of this corner becomes permanent glazing. That's that's my particular opinion. I don't know if any of the other commissioners feel that way. Are there any other comments? I will give my comments. I did happen to go by when the story polls were up, which I'm sure everyone else did. And I have to say that I was, at first, I have to be honest, upset when I saw the story polls. But we had given you conceptual, and um, it has convinced me that, in some ways, that these 3D softwares are um, don't necessarily always tell the truth that I want to know. May I, I just no, no, no. Because there was a mistake on the story polls that the planning commission is aware of that you All right, weren't well, when, seeing them. When we're done. Okay. I'm also. Uh, I had hoped, in coming back and seeing this presentation, that the views that I remembered would be maintained. And so I was disappointed to hear of the reduction from 35 to 25 of that passageway. I was disappointed to see the glazing that was shown in the midpoint area. And granted, looking at the plans, perhaps I should have assumed that there was some closure there, but the view in the 3D did not show it. Um, it doesn't take away from my previous feeling that I think you've done a very good job with this project given the parameters. 
but it does mean, from my point of view, that I'm going to underline what other commissioners have said, which is that I feel very strongly that you're going to need to manipulate these buildings in order to ensure some of the things that were promised. Madam Chair, Ms. Murray, I really want to concur every word that the ch Chair Naylor has said. Because before this meeting, I re I'm the only one who dissented from this project when uh, through the iterations here, and I was looking forward to come and be completely positive and join the crowd. I want to. Uh, you're doing a good, good job and 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 something important for the community, but I. I completely agree with everything that has, um, uh, Chair Naylor has said. Uh, I, I wish and hope that you would continue to manipulate the building and, and take into consideration all these comments that uh, it's a sacrifice on your part, but it's a sacrifice for eternity for this community. And okay, so you don't get some of the square footage you want, then you may lose some money, but in the long run you are giving the community uh, enormous benefit that nobody can do except in your position. So I would really would like to see some opening in that uh, from the Victoria. I, I actually like like the, the bridge, the stock, the bridge on this side. I actually like that bridge, and I I, I, I like that bridge, and that's just my own personal opinion. But I think if there's some kind of a way that you could uh, make those two bridges um, speak to each other in some kind of a fashion and also bring that sense that you want to show part of Arlington, that you, 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 are, you are giving something back to the community. I understand that part is a private area, but this is a case where the Arlington is a, a public building, and if there is a way some people could share some of that side of it, just so they have a sense of the larger building, that will just be wonderful. Thank you. Brian, you want to talk about what story polls were incorrect? Yeah, the this, this story polls that, unfortunately, this stretch of story poll showed as being a full two stories all the way across. Yes, it did. And that and was incorrect. So that that was, incorrect. that was very unfortunate. <laughs> we had to point that out to the Planning Commission, but we didn't have time to change it. So that makes a big difference in terms of what you see. I mean, the, and you know... In, in, it was my fault, but um, it's actually my fault, <laughs> Madam, Madam Chair. But when it's his fault, it's my fault. I think the important thing is that what we've what we've worked with you on from a massing standpoint has not changed, which was one story all the way around, with the exception of this these two story masses. And that's where you lose the view of the Arlington. So that one, because anytime you put two stories on the street, you're going to lose the Arlington view. And then we kept the third story back to that three-story view corridor line, if you will, with the exception of the two units that are three stories behind these two-story units. And so none of that has changed. This is the most significant change from what you, you saw. And this line actually did come back 18 inches. Um, I guess speaking to, you know, we're going to have to decide what we want to do with this, but I, you know, as far as these two bridges, since that was a topic of discussion, I don't think they want to be the same. To me, this is an archway that isn't really, it's not, it's not trying to look I'm, like, a, well, you don't want me to. No, because okay. it's, it's the topic for the next okay. level of can, can, I'm talking. Can I get one last clarification? Okay. Um, just so we can respond, so yeah. I have a better understanding. Well, and we haven't summarized the comments, okay. but go ahead. Um, I just wanted to put this in front of you, and just to get a better understanding. This uh -huh. is, this is. There was a comment on this view, mm -hmm. and this is when it was completely open, mm -hmm. with nothing in front of it. Mm -hmm. This one virtually has the same opening uh -huh. with glass in it. But there's a very. Uh, I'll respond. There's a very, very different perception from my point of view of an opening through a complex of buildings as opposed to a barrier. And that is now a barrier, glass or not. Okay. That's that was my. But point I mean, in, in this sense, we would have to secure it in some way. I understand. So if, and that if was this always was maintained and me. there was wrought iron in it, I, well, is, is that? I think it still needs a barrier. It's Even with wrought iron. I, I, you know, I have to think about it.
about it. I don't um, her response. I yeah, I, I'd, I'd have to think about it. I, so um, I'm going to try and um, summarize the comments, if I may. And please correct me if I, yes, Mr. Pujo. Uh, yeah, I wonder if uh, one of my different comments, could you summarize them? How do you know that they are shared? Right. Well, my summary is going to be a lot more brief than some of the comments. Yeah, like for instance, I agree with your comment on, on the bridge. On the first, the first bridge, I think is fine, and, and, and I have some other uh, ideas of the other. But we have different. You know. Well, here, here's my thought, and I think yeah. this is always the problem. Um, the applicants who are savvy and are experienced took down every comment that was made, and they know that you express them and have those concerns. They also know that my summary is going to be not quite up to snuff with all of those and that I will be briefly summarizing them. It's their choice, I think, whether to respond simply to my brief summary or whether to respond to all of the comments if they can. I think that's always the case with a complex project. I could take straw votes for everything, but I don't think... Well, I think, I think if the majority of the um, summation of your comments don't reflect a particular I'm um, you to commissioner's yeah. um, stance or feeling on the project, then they should either correct it or vote against it because of, of those reasons, if there's a substantial amount. If there isn't consensus, then you can't support it. You can't support the motion. Not that you can't support the project. You can't support the motion. A comment made about Chapala Street elevation in terms of openings on, 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 the, uh, on the north side or not. The, uh, the, uh, the, the location of murals or no murals and so forth. Uh, this is something that we very clearly can come to a consensus, you know, and we, without having the applicant coming to go through iterations, because I think there's a, a majority opinion on both cases, and I think yeah. that should prevail. Let me try and summarize, and I have to say this is not going to be my best summary ever. <laughs> um, Do you want me to do Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you can. In general, I think you can take from the um, scarcity of comments and the specificity of comments that we still feel that we agree with your general approach, mass, bulk, and scale of your project. What we do have concern about is, however, for you to continue to search for ways to open up the pedestrian circulation and views from the public street to the monument, the landmark of the Arlington. That can be accomplished, we hope, through manipulation of the market, its mass, its shape, its size, its dimensions, as well as re-exploring your northwest ramp at that corner. There is feeling among the commissioners that it is too contrived in trying to do what you did and that perhaps reducing the mass of the building behind at the north and retaining the geometric form would provide a better access and opening. With regard to the market, there is also concern that the openings provided that give that transparent feeling of that mass at the corner be more traditional. The suggestion was made as to type of openings. In terms of landscape, the roof deck trees are too large as proposed. There should be more potted plants proposed in the Paseos. Uh, can I just add something to the yeah. landscape comment for the second part? I think this will help is to um, make sure that the landscaping used on the second floor deck is as transparent as possible to allow views to the Arlington building. And then I will, <clears throat> God, I just forgot what I was going to add. There is 
continued discussion about the bridges at the upper levels. There is no consensus at this point about what you should do in terms of looking at those bridges. Could, could I ask for, because you've heard me now mention it a few times, on, on this. You want a straw vote on that one? Yeah, because... All right, let's take a straw vote on this bridge. Let's call this bridge the Southerly. The Southerly Bridge between the market and which the is, residences. Which is best seen in, in, in this view. From Victoria Street. And again, I, I want to be clear to the commission that to me, I, I don't want it to read as a bridge. It's an archway. And an archway. as proposed, we are going to take a straw vote on it as proposed. All those who pre, who prefer the plaster proposed bridge on this proposal, please raise your hands. That's the Southerly Bridge, as proposed. How many? Unanimous. 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 Thank you. This one, I agree, we need, needs a lot of work to yes. study this to make it, it, this one needs to be as transparent as possible. I completely agree with that. Can go away. We'll study that. Absolutely. How about like the Grand Central Station, that walkway? <laughs> mm -hmm. It's all gold. It's, you actually walk on glass. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? So, Madam Chair, did you want to try and put together a subcommittee? Yes, I think that is a good idea. Unless anyone on this commission feels they'd like to see, well, then they should go in the subcommittee. <laughs> Who would like to volunteer for this subcommittee? Mr. Drury, Mr. Adams, Mr. Pujo, Mr. Pujo, mm -hmm. subcommittee down. <laughs> well, with, he's got Alan Conto, and he's invaluable on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's talk about, Madam Chair. If, let's talk about what how we want this process to work. Because, of course, I'm still hopeful that we can grant this preliminary approval today with conditions, knowing that it's going to enter into this design development process so with, with the commission for a while. And it would seem like what I do is I maybe meet with the subcommittee and work on ideas but then still come back in progress to the full board just as a as, you know along the way obviously Checking. you know at least a couple of times before we're trying to come here for final approval so we could do a blend of those or if you prefer maybe it's all with the subcommittee until the final approval I don't I don't know well, I think we have to um, decide whether or not you're getting, or whether or not we're ready to get preliminary approval. Right. Uh, I will entertain a motion. Step, so, yeah. So the motion is for preliminary approval um, with the comments made. Do I have you a made second? Oh, you made that motion? Sure. Okay. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Aye. Two opposed. Three opposed. Wait, Three opposed. Did you, okay. did you say aye? Aye. So you're opposed. Three opposed. Sharps opposed. I Miller am opposed. and uh, Murray. For four opposed. So may four, may four. I may I comment? No. Uh, make a comment. No, you can't because we have a, a deadlock right now. It's four four. Is oh. it? Yep. One two three four. One two three four. Um, um, I would rather see it go to the subcommittee. Now work out some of these main issues and then come back for a preliminary. Mm. Um, that usually in our experience with Ellen Canto, our subcommittee would work and, you know, they come back and do um, Adam Chair, I will change my vote to no. Okay, so I, the motion failed. The motion failed. Now, okay, can, I, can I speak to that? Can I speak to that? So he withdrew his second. Commissioner Drury withdrew his second of the motion. Okay. The motion failed. Okay. All right, so I make a motion to continue this. Subcommittee. 
with a common space. I'll second that motion. All those in favor of the motion? We have discussion first. The motion? Yes, because I do think this is a, is a critical thing for you. Yeah, it is critical because I will not release them to do design development until we have preliminary approval. So that is a very big step in our milestones going forward. And, you know, we have worked very hard uh, and have made lots of changes and have taken a lot of square feet out of this project. Um, and that doesn't mean that I'm not willing to continue to work, but, but I just would like to make a couple of comments. And this goes to Commissioner Sharp's comment about taking eight or ten square feet out of the market. This public market is privately owned. It's not owned by a city or a municipality. It's owned by a private entity. Um, markets become infeasible when they get to be a certain size. You know, you have, you have a certain mix of tenant that you need to put in. It's not a grocery store, but it's a market, you know, a public market. And so the project is bordering on infeasible in terms of the square footage. You know, we made a lot of changes and, and put the market where it was historically, which inherently made the market smaller. Ideally, this market would have been the same size as the market is now, which is 20,000, almost 21,000 square feet. Taking, you know, eight or 10 feet out of a market is several square feet out of a market, which is, yes, we do, we do lose money on that. Um, and so that's point number one. Point number two is we are improving pro private property that is not our property as a part of our project. We're improving Arlington property. The back of this building, the, the, the back which is the, the, the portion that um, this the, the west. If you, if you come, you know, the, the entire back side of our project, which is the side of the Arlington, we are improving that property to create a paseo. We are improving the paseo from Victoria to the Arlington, taking those garbage cans off and improving that, that right of way. So, you know, we are, I mean, that's, we, we're not responsible for improving uh, the Corwin's property, but we're doing that to enhance not only our project, but the Arlington. And so I would ask this commission to have faith. I mean, we came through five meetings with you, got planning commission approval, have worked with you every step of the way. I would ask you to continue to have faith in our ability and willingness to work with you and grant us preliminary approval so that we can move ahead in a meaningful way. Not in, in just continuing to have this dialogue that we don't get anywhere, but really in a meaningful way. Thank you. Sure, Nate. I just want to add just one thing. I mean, this is, you know, you know it is, this actually is a, it has gone remarkably quick from the standpoint that when we started designing this and working with you to the time we got to the Planning Commission, it took a mere two years. And that's fast, probably, by a lot of Santa Barbara standards. But, but there, you can see there is a tremendous amount of work that went into it from the time you last saw it to the Planning Commission approval, and there's a lot of civil engineering and that sort of thing that you haven't even looked at. But it, it, would, it, it is, I can tell you, I know from Marge and her investor standpoint, it's very important that she have an, a milestone with which to release the consultants and get this going from a time scheduling standpoint. Obviously, without preliminary approval, she doesn't feel that she can do that. So the problem that we have from a timing standpoint, I will tell you, is I'm going on vacation from Saturday to, for two weeks. And so, you know, we're going to be a month until, you're, until the next time we can meet with you. I'm, you know, I don't know, I don't know if, it can, if I can change anybody's mind, but, you know, it, it obviously, I don't want to get in, into this, this no man's land where we're just, we have nothing and we keep sort of fiddling and never get to a preliminary approval. But. 
and, and I just would like to say one more thing, and that is, you know, the intention here is not to, you know, apply this, you know, pressure to the Historic Landmarks Commission that you have to give us preliminary approval. But I really feel that we've earned our stripes as we've come through this process with you and have shown that, you know, we are willing to work with you and want to make this, you know, project, I, the term I used at the Planning Commission hearing was, you know, placemaking. I've been a, 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 a member of this community since the 70s, and so this project is as important to me as it is to you. I feel like this is sort of a legacy project for me and my company. I've been here since 1965. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I have to say this applicant has worked very hard, I, and, you know, and they have conceded much and worked with us much, and all I see is details that could be worked out. And I, I'm very much in support of a preliminary approval and to go to a subcommittee to work out some of these kinks. There's nothing major. The massing is still pretty much there. It's the details that we're worried about, and we can handle that after preliminary. Well, basically, there, there, there are five people on this commission that you, you, you have to convince otherwise, and that's... The only other thing I can say to the Historic Landmarks Commission is my birthday is on Friday. So why don't you give me a birthday present? And my birthday was last Friday. Just trying to add a little levity. <laughs> that was the discussion. I'm just going to put together, uh, I'm just going to throw out a motion to no, reconsider. Voted on the second okay. Question. Motion. The second motion was um, to continue this in two weeks to the subcommittee. I believe that was your motion, Alex. Was it two yeah. weeks? Yeah. Or indefinitely, excuse me, I'm sorry. Maybe I withdraw the motion. Okay. So we're back into the... the okay, so, uh, so we're back. Let, let somebody else make that motion. So you're withdrawn. Who? Okay, I will... Who withdraw, somebody needs to withdraw the previous motion that was made. He did. Okay. Oh, I didn't hear him. Thank okay. you. So I will make another motion for preliminary approval with the comments initially made. Do I have a second? I'll second. Yes. All those in favor of a preliminary? Aye. I'll raise your hands, please, so that we know. It's four and four again. It's four and four again. I, I will express that for me, that 10 feet here is a big number. And this opening, I'm thinking about the wrought iron thing. You know, if it's open all day, fine. It's not open. It's, I mean, I, I guess it's, I mean, that's an easy change for us. If it's open all day. Yes, but, I, you know, but, but I mean, it, we it's a work, proper we lobby. Certainly work that out, you know. As we go along, but so that's why I'm saying. For me, this is not details. This is an opening, and this is ten feet. Ten feet. So, could I understand that your what that's your expectation? That's a conceptual level for me. Could I understand what your expectation is on this dimension? I mean, you know, the It was the, thirty-five. It was thirty-five, but in terms of this being a paseo and what we expect that you know that paseo to be. It's not just the circulatory part of the Paseo, it is also how it opens up to the Arlington and, and the rest of that. It, it's not just that it's a Paseo, it is its relation to the Arlington. That's a one-story building. Well, I... It, it, it's, can it's, I... It's a pedestrian spatial relationship to, to the landmark. And I think that that's the uneasiness uh, mm -hmm. we have. So I'm just, yeah, I'm just saying, you know, why for me, preliminary, preliminary. Can, that's one can, vote that... Can I suggest a, a motion that if we agreed to pull that back and open up the opening? Well, wait a minute, Joe. Well, I, I mean, see, I, I don't think she... No, we, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think, think she's going no, but there. but I want to make a point, okay? We took square footage out of the market, and that's why we extended the commercial so that we had the square footage that we took out of the market, we, we put there. I am more willing to look at that piece potentially than opening this up 
because this is a proper lobby that you walk into with a concierge where you get your mail where there's an elevator you know it's a it's a, a central point that's the front door to this project if you live here that's your front door and so to have that be open air this is not you know like other projects you've seen in Santa Barbara where you walk into a courtyard like Chapala 1 or Andalus or Paseo Chapala where there's no covered space for the people that live there this is a secure you know and I'm sure all of us have been to buildings like this where you walk in and it and it is an amenity to the people that live there so you are saying you are willing to then open this up back up again yeah, but I mean, but not let me finish but but not um open open that, that or make that more transparent you know that is at the end of a walkway i i'm and just so, i'm just trying to get your your some of your comments yes because i think it voted. takes away from yeah. the nature i mean we're trying to do something here in terms of this mixed use that is different um, just in you know, in an effort to keep this moving and, and get this going, um, would would any of the, the the four people feel comfortable with that? And I'm not trying to run this meeting, Suzette, mm -hmm. but um, we're at a stalemate here right now. We've got four against four. So, if, if the applicant were to um, not just study opening this up, but opening it up, are you married to ten feet? I I believe in design. I think. You know, there is no number that is sacrosanct, and I think there are ways to achieve something. So I don't want to okay. limit you to a number in well, any we way. Well, we would absolutely look but, at that. But, you know, I mean, I should not be lobbying for my vote. <laughs> no, no, I, it's not that I'm lobbying for your I did, No, but I'm just saying I expressed it because I wanted to tell you why I was not voting for preliminary. That was a conceptual level change from my, from my point of view. Yeah. I, I, I just have to say, I, I want to be clear why why I thought it was okay. Because from an Arlington view standpoint, this is the this is the corner that that defines what you see of the Arlington right here, and this is not because this is one story, and, and pulling this back is not going to change any views of the Arlington. Just just as I argued, pulling this back is not going to change views of the Arlington because it's. It's One not story. the Arlington. Yeah. It is the relationship of the public to access to the Arlington. It is not a visual. It's it's a different it's thing. A sense of place it's a feeling. Kind of thing. Yeah. Well, I and I, you know, I unfortunately now I, you know, I mean, I I probably completely blew it by being honest and disclosing exactly what changed from the time no. you we last met. No, I didn't have to do that because I'm not sure you would have noticed if I hadn't. So, no. so I would just like to say that, that, you know, we will always be forthcoming about what we have done and what we want to do. But I think that, quite frankly, we have now created an opportunity for people to be able to see the Arlington Theater, unlike now where if you think parking cars in front of a historic building is seeing a historic building, I would have to disagree with you. We are now creating an opportunity for people to walk back here and have a relationship with the Arlington Theater, which they don't currently have. Let's, you know, can we, can I, we, we do need back to move to forward because I do have more um, on the agenda. Precisely I think Phil is trying to help us out, and I, mm -hmm. I, I think um, if it's okay with you, Marge, I think we should agree to study to pull that back and see if anybody's vote changes that, that as a result. That is okay with me. That is absolutely okay. Okay, so since there was a failed uh, motion, I will make the same motion. No. That well, you're going to add. No, no, no. Well, no, no. okay, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Um, with the addition of. Um, with the addition of uh, opening up the 125 Paseo significantly. So the motion is to preliminary, preliminary approval. approval with the applicant to widen the sale 125 significantly. And the previous comments made and the on, previous previous comments. on the previous motion. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that, that's right. the motion. Okay. And what about all those comments? That's what, what I just said. Yeah. That, yeah. that all those, that, all those previous com the original comments go with this approval. Marge, would you agree to and studying the transparency of that front opening? I mean, we won't leave it open, but we can study the transparency of yeah, that we'll opening. Study it, but it, but 
but it can't be an open. Okay. Oh, and excuse me, just significantly. Is that going okay. to be open to everybody's different okay. determination? Well, let me go. Let me let me go a little bit further. I, although I hesitate to put a number on it because it's not it, it, it's not something quantifiable. But, but I would say um, from um, five, anywhere from five feet to eight feet. That's my motion. So open it up. Minimally five feet. Optimally eight feet. We, you don't even have to say eight. You no. could say five to ten. Give it a wide berth. Okay. A range. Well, I, 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 want, I want to try and work with the applicant, though, too, because obviously they felt that they needed to take off that ten feet, so I'm, I'm giving them the, the, the two feet there. So my motion is the onset. Um, minimally five feet, optimally eight feet. So call for the question, please. Sure. Uh, I will second the motion then. See how. I would like to hear the motion before I go. This preliminary approval with the applicant to widen Paseo 125 from five to eight feet, and then all the other comments. Which includes working with studying yes. the transparency of that second entry. Okay, I, I will throw that in. I, I don't feel quite as strongly about that, but. Um, I will throw that in. I, we need to keep this moving. The transparency of yeah of Paseo 127. The residential. And then, of and course, bringing it to the study. subcommittee. Serious study. Yes, maybe. Okay, so it would be preliminary approval and indefinite continuance to subcommittee with the applicant to widen Paseo 125, 5 to 8 feet, minimum 5 to 8 feet, 8 feet optimal, and study transparency of Paseo 127, and then all the other comments. All I'd say is seriously study the second Paseo. Paseo 127. 127, just say seriously study. Well, that was part of the, the other comments. Yeah, so, okay, so call the question, please, Madam Chair. All those in favor of this motion? Please Aye. raise your hand. Aye. Okay, so how many? One, two, three, four, five, three. Boucher, Sharp. All those opposed? Boucher, Sharp, or three. Abstain. All oh, abstain. That motion carries. Thank you. Yeah. Will you put me on the subcommittee? But I don't think I can be there all the time because I'm also on the Ellen Canto subcommittee. <laughs> okay. Well, the first so, meeting, and it then, seems to me, would Madam be the Chair, most important one. Um, Thank you. Part of that, part of the motion usually contains um, the compatibility analysis, but I'm, I didn't, haven't read the minutes, but I asked the planner and she said that you, that the commission had made the analysis yes. Yes. before yes. comments yes. going to planning commission. <laughs> right. So I'm wondering if we might be able to just include a sentence in the motion that still reinforces that. Do you want me to craft a sentence? Yeah, just yes. insert so a ahead. sentence, and, and we really should address it because it's you're granting preliminary approval. Right. And to include the motion, this um, approval is compatible with. The previous minutes said the project is in compliance with the required compatibility findings in terms of the mass, bulk, and scale. So can we add that to the yes. motion? Yes. Is that okay with the seconder? Yes. And everybody else? Great. Mm -hmm. Thank may, you. may I also suggest, just in, in the spirit of record keeping here, the um, the planning commission comments talk about the all the items that would happen prior to preliminary approval. It says unless alternate timing is identified therein, and it seems to me that you're designating this to go to the subcommittee is the alternative timing for the refined working out of all these items that they, that will be done in the process of the of the subcommittee you know right because it says HLC instance, shall not grant preliminary approval of the project unless the following planning commission land use conditions have been satisfied unless alternate timing is identified therein yeah. so I just want to make I just think that would be good to make sure that it's clear that that is the, the subcommittee is the 
the, the, the alternate timing be. as described in the planning commission resolution is being fulfilled by our subcommittee meetings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Yes, should I figure that out? <laughs> Designate the subcommittee now. Yes, what? I believe it was you. It was Jury, Pujo, Adam. Adams, and um, <coughs> I'm not going to be able to address all of them. I, I, would like, I, I would like Mr. Sharp to be in this subcommittee <laughs> because the, the, the other one, the other subcommittee will finish at its in in tail end. And this one will start in about a month or so because you have to do other things, right? Well, I'd like to try to meet in in in, in three, you know, within the next three weeks when okay, I yeah you know, yeah yeah back. I won't be I, back. I, I will be working week, on solutions prior to that to meet with the subcommittee. But what, is it our? Yes. Will it be our responsibility then to contact one of yeah. you about? Yeah, uh, the staff. Staff. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. And they'll arrange it. All right. We're going to have a five-minute break. Thank God. <laughs> Item number five. 112 West Korea Boulevard, and my apologies for running late. Madam Chair, I know exactly how that is, so <laughs> no worries. Will you introduce Running yourself? Late. My name is Robert Uli. I'm the county architect uh, representing uh, this project at the Sun River uh, Veterans Memorial Building. Will you describe your project? Uh, in essence, uh, this is a project that actually came to us from um, a private donor who is also a veteran. Um, and the issue really is that this loggia uh, represented by the drawings is a place for alternate housing for those who are uh, homeless. And so it's really a matter of securing the property from that, uh, that use, and that's what these gates are. What it also gives us, interestingly enough, an opportunity to do, because there are five arches and five main branches of the military, it gives us an opportunity to recognize each one of those branches of military for their service. So that's what you see across the top of the arch, and the reason why those gates have that uh, head component to them uh, is to hold an emblem that is being made to place in the middle of it. My only error not being in the military myself is knowing the correct order in which military service happened in history. And uh, the Marines came before the Navy, although the Navy might say they became before the Marines, but that's a matter of... It doesn't matter who came first, the Navy is most important. I see. <laughs> no. You see? <laughs> anyway, so, so the order of the emblems really should be Army, Marines, Navy, Air Force, and Coast Guard, but that's a minor minor issue. Um, the gates are designed in such a way so that when they fold open, with the exception of the far left and right, they fold on top of one another and remain open during the duration the building is open during the day and only closed at night. And that pretty much is, in a nutshell, what we're up to. Do you want to talk about the gates a little bit? Pardon? Do you want to talk about the gates? So the uh, gates are designed uh, with two basic components. There are some tubular pieces just for structure because it's a 10-foot opening and getting those gates to self-support uh, is an issue. And then the smaller elements are solid uh, wrought iron pieces. The whole thing will be painted black. Um, the only color on these gates will be the emblems themselves. Um, and then the locking mechanism, of course, is a fairly traditional kind of thing on the back side of that gate. Thank you. Are there any questions? I have a question. Madam Michelle. What's the measurement of, of these? 18 inches. 18 inches. I'm wondering if those, please, so you know, should go to the sign committee. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to ask okay. staff. I'm not trying to make things difficult because I oh. get stuck over the desk of signs. I well, see. The, the building is here for a courtesy review, which means they don't have to necessarily go through the full process. Um, they're not, you know, it, sometimes when you talk about signage, you talk about anything that would draw your attention to a building could be considered signage. However, this is a memorial in its, in its uh, nature, and you know, it's, it's an important building for a number of us that have been in the armed services. 
And um, I, I would say that uh, these are not signage. I, I'd be willing to make that call as staff and put my neck on the line to, Thank you. to say sure. that. A question then regarding these, um, these plaques. Um, do they have to be this vivid in color? These are uh, representatives of actually decals that we were given for purposes of the exhibit. I don't know if the colors are going to be that strong. Um, the organization that is funding the project is here, so I might want to turn and ask them how, how, how vivid they're going to be. Do you need to come up to the microphone, sir? Sorry. <laughs> And your name for the record along yep, with your rank and serial number. <laughs> yes. Check the innocent. Uh, my name is John Blankenship, and I'm executive director of the Pierre Kleissen's Veterans Museum and Library. And these were the cows I got at the air show just so that Robert could see the colors, but they were in reflective, like a tick. I mean, they're, they're sort of gaudy, I thought. But uh, the real ones are much more muted. Uh, I would say instead of this uh, reflective material. And they are are they this uh, exact size? They're 18 inches. Yeah, 18 about, about inches, 18 right. inches. Yeah. Which is six inches bigger than, bigger the, than the, big the largest. The largest. Just so you know. And they are made of metal. Uh, they're actually it's put on mylar so they don't fade. And then we're going to mount them uh, onto something using a bonding material so people can't pry them off. And then it will be welded to the wrought iron because it's uh, we di we just don't want people to be able to use a crowbar to take them off. Any other questions? I have a question. <clears throat> what is in this opening and that opening? And is this accessible? No. So the the left um, and the right of the loggia at one point were open uh, and have been closed off uh, for m many years. The, the base is um, a red brick uh, to about 40 inches or so, and then above that is a wooden grill lattice, and that happens at each end. And it's been there as long as I can remember. And this opening has Doors that go into a patio, is that right? Yes. Which aren't shown up, partial. Right. Yeah. Sure. And a uh, uh, question. What, what, what is the minimum height these have to be? It's shown at eight feet. I, I believe it's seven, isn't Probably it? Probably seven. Seven? Yeah. Okay. Are there any other questions? Yeah, Madam Chair, mm -hmm. uh, I, don't, I don't see what, <clears throat> the spacing between the uh, upright rods is how much? Five inches. Is that? Is there any um, safety issues with children or anything? Is that? Uh, I guess that'd be that'd be a pretty big head. To... Small dogs can get in. Yeah, small, small dogs. Small okay. dogs, but big people cannot. Okay. Well, since it's not serving as a guardrail, that's right. There's no requirement. Yeah. Madam Chair. Yes. Just one thing I'd like to point out structurally: there is a, it does call for some tube steel, which is not normally. Yes. Right. Exactly. Um, accepted by this commission, so you might want to look at that in terms of whether that can be done in a, in a, in a solid component, uh, keeping the more traditional feel. Right. So again, that uh, tube steel is used to give the gate structural integrity. It's a wood frame plaster building, and uh, even the facade that we see now was changed from the original when the building was constructed in the teens some point along the 40s is when this facade came along. So those arches really don't have any strength to them. You really can't hang anything on it and expect the gate to survive in its operation. So the tube steel gives that uh, structural frame so the gates can operate without, without damage to the building. It's a square tube. Yeah. Do you know what the gauge is? Um, yeah. I do not know. Something's going to be. So, um, you know, it's Could it be done in some sort of flat deep stock? Deep by two inches. Yeah. Could, could, yeah um, could, could that tubular component be done in flat stock, or is there too much deflection in the flat? Too much deflection. 
because we don't approve tubular steel. That's right. That's the yeah. Are there any other questions? If there are none, I'll take comments. Madam uh, Chair? Yes. Um, I think it's acceptable to um, close these arches off. I don't have a problem with that necessarily. Um, <laughs> what I am struggling with is, is the proportions of, of this opening and, and where this breakup happens. Um, it, it needs to come down a little bit more. Um, the other uh, issue I'm having is with, with the tubular steel. Um, I realize why you're doing it, but it, 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 it's just something that's not um, typically done in the district so or to a uh, historic building. Madam Chair, I would agree with the, the eight foot dimension. I think imagining it at seven feet would be a nicer proportion and it also gives a larger field for the 18 inch if it's approved at 18 inches uh, rather than seemingly being pinched up in that that arch as you see it there. I also wonder if there shouldn't be more of a solid base, which is more traditional, mm -hmm. uh, with possibly some clavos or something, or penetrations uh, to further change the proportion and make it look a little less mundane and more like it, more tradition and like it belongs on the building. Other than that, I uh, certainly think it's a good idea. Any other comments? Yeah, I guess I guess you know I have nothing against the insignias, but I feel that the dimensions of the insignia are you know are just very 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 large. If those could be reduced, then um, that that would be I would like it better. Something about the size of that large E. That's twelve inches. Yeah, uh, I twelve fourteen the, inches. Something um, like that. I, I mean, I would think, I mean, just proportionally, you're going to have, I'm, in, I'm thinking about the human dimension. I would say the second E in is something we want to look at. Um, really, historically, these are just not right things to put on these arches, I mean, the arches, because they're shallow. They were just not meant to have this uh, iron, so I, I would, you know, you got all the suggestions. And also putting this very large, I mean, 18 inches are large too. On top of that, put those in there. I think, it's, it's to me, it's a big impact on a historic building that is really not its original plan. And um, I, I just don't know what to say. I, I, I don't know. Chair, may I ask? Um, Commissioner Murray, what was the reason that you f uh, feel that the iron gates aren't appropriate? Well, the the loggia was meant to be open, and so the thickness of the walls, to me, are, are, are not thick enough okay. to put up, um, you know, a, a massive gate like that. And I just I think it will really show, uh, and and so. But I also at the same time realize what you're trying to do, okay. uh, and so to have things like that and then to put uh, these large um, uh, emblems on them will just even bring more impact to a uh, uh, historic structure which you wouldn't do in any historic structure actually so uh, that, yeah th those are my concerns Madam Chair yes uh, to, to what Fermina was saying could, would it be more acceptable to team Fermina if they furred out the arches to the rear a little bit so that the, the iron would be brought back past where the original thickness of the arch was, that, you know, was that effect? Yeah, that would help. That also might help you structurally by whatever that furring material is, you can make the gates, maybe you don't have to use the, the tubular steel if you fur it in. And the navy plaque should be a little bit brighter than the other four, I think. I think. Oh, it will be, trust me. <laughs> no, and um, I just want to follow up with Fermina's comments, Th those shields are very, very large. The smaller the, those could be, again, more human scale, the, the better they will look with this building because at 18 inches, I think it's going to have, have a, it, there's nothing wrong with the insignias, but it's going to have a detrimental effect 
effect on the appearance of this iron within these arches. And I, I think those emblems should be uh, re reduced, reduced possibly by 50%. You'll still see it. But it's out of human scale to me, being as large as proposed. Consider that as a size um, for for the plaques. What are the dimensions of these currently on the drawing? Are they about what about six inches away from? So. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the largest piece up there. Twelve inches. That seems a little large. I would think it's ten. Ten would be adequate. Never that far away from it, unless yeah. you're on the beach. Yeah, I was going to say the beach. I, I think the, uh, there is some kind of a compromise in there. Uh, I, I agree with the comment on the uh, on the doors being a little bit smaller, maybe seven foot six is a good compromise. I think that the plaques are a little bit big and maybe twelve to fourteen inches. It, it, it's a good compromise. The letters would be about two inches, you know, in the United States. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. So I mean, I. To, 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 to reduce this from 18 to, let's say, 14, that would be probably be an area, would be probably a 40% reduction in, in, the, in the area of the two. Yeah. Yeah. So it would be smaller. I, I think the, uh, the walls look to be about 14 inches already. I, I don't think you need to fur those. Uh, and I agree with the comment on the, uh, on the bottom rail as being a thicker bottom rail and uh, try to uh, minimize the use of, of tubular steel. Maybe you have to use some of it uh, for, the, maybe for the outside frame. Mm -hmm. By the way, it would be a difficult uh, installation because you have to scribe every frame, and every frame would be different. You know, you may take them, you know, you're going, so you're going to end up with a lot of, uh, what, a lot of uh, sealant around it. <laughs> so it's a little bit of a, of a tricky situation, the way you're planning to do it. But I think there's some kind of a compromise without really uh, changing drastically what, what you're trying to do. Um, I would also like to just express support for that idea of the clavos in the base plate. That would make these actually elegant. Right now, they're looking like jail. So. <laughs> Madam Chair, uh, one more thing. We suggest... Uh, a dark Malaga green, which is a black green rather than just black, mm -hmm. uh, which you see all over town, and you see very little black, but it helps pick it up a little bit. No, it's just that the other one over there is black. So. Well, so repaint it. <laughs> Got a lot of volunteers down there. That. I, don't, I don't control that. This is a gift to the building because they, uh, they can't control the, Madam the homeless no. problem. Yes. Um, just in, in interest to what, what um, Mr. Pigeot was saying about the frames, that's true. The frames are going to be difficult to get them exact. So therefore, the furring would put the frame behind the wall. I think might help hide that. And then, like I say, keep the traditional thickness. This, this traditional depth won't be changed. So therefore, uh, hopefully that will make for me happy. I think it'd be a good compromise. And just throwing that out there. Madam Chair. So just suggestions. It's not to beat a dead horse on the, the size of those plaques, but the size of those plaques should not be any larger than the lettering on the building, the Veterans Memorial Building. They should be significantly smaller than those. Because what you want your eye to go to is the name of the building, not necessarily those plaques. Those are decorations. So if that gives you some guidance mm -hmm. as to the size. Well. Excellent comments. Thank you. Okay. I don't need to summarize them. Thank you. <laughs> no. Nope. You got it. Oh, you I, I do want to add, it. though, uh, my comment, which is that I certainly do appreciate, Mr. Blankage, of you and your organization to make this still a usable building, one that is not defiled or defaced, and to put forward the insignia of our armed forces, which are doing a tremendous job right now. Thank you. I concur. I think everybody on this commission. And we'll see how effective our comments were. <laughs>
So, Madam Chair. Um, I would then submit a motion uh, to continue this. No, it's just comments only. Thank you. Yeah, excuse me. <laughs> um, I just went upstairs and asked Mr. Lamone because I thought it was just courtesy review comments only. Oh. He said, go ahead and make a motion. They don't have to follow it, but go ahead and make a motion. And also, if you could please make uh, no adverse impact findings and historic resource findings. So, no, I'll, I'll make the same motion with the comments that we made, and if the comments are integrated into the de design, there should be no uh, impact to the historic building. All those in favor? Madam Chair, can I ask a special favor? If the mo maker of the motion would consider, um, I'd like to point out that this cooperation between the county and the city is a good thing, and I'd like to see this, you know, continue. And so I'd just like to have that recognized that we do appreciate when the county comes forward and, and takes the time to go through this commission. And, and with that being said, I will turn it back to you. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Early. Yes. Okay, so you want to... Okay, we have a motion. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second, right? Yes. Okay, so... All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Final Abstain? There was no motion. It's final approval. I think that the motion should say something like the uh, the, uh, the the historic landmarks commission appreciates the, uh, uh, the the collaborative work with with the city and the county regarding this application. That's number one. Two, the commission recommends that the height of the doors be lowered to seven six to to improve the proportions of the project. Seven six Th or lower, I think. Or, or lower. lower. Three, the commission recommends reducing the uh, the the, uh, the the size of of, of the medallions. Uh, to be more in scale with the signage. Okay, are you taking notes? Okay. Four, uh, the commission recommends the use of, of, of a barren rail, of a larger barren rail with traditional detailing. Five, the commission recommends the uh, installation of the, uh, of the frame behind the uh, plaster arches in order to, uh, to uh, fac yeah, facilitate, yeah, in order to uh, Minimize the the, the 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 visual impact to the um, to the architecture, and to avoid the use of tubular steel if possible. Right. Okay. And, yeah. And, and six, that would be uh, minimize the use of tubular steel as as much as possible. And, and seven to uh, paint the iron of Milagro green, not not pure black. All, yeah. all the doors to me. There we go. Thank you. All those, <laughs> and I believe we voted on that. So thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you. Look forward to seeing it. Thank you. Next item of business is East Annapamoose Street. The 00 East Annapamoose Street was postponed two weeks at the applicant's oh, request. Okay. Are we done? No. No. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, 35 <laughs> East, 35 State Street. And our, my apologies, but I have to leave it. I have to leave it five, so there's not a, a thing for you guys. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you guys were in a good mood today? Did you? <laughs> Who would have said that? <laughs> Running into uh, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> but that doesn't include everyone. <laughs> That's right. Uh, okay, we're waiting for Melissa. We're in a good mood. So good. Way to go. Yeah. Way to go. <laughs> we'll bring you our smiles. <laughs> Just bring a drink. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Mark Shields with Design Arc. Melissa Snarley with Design Arc. And Kim True with Suiting Design. 
Uh, well, we're happy to be back. Uh, we're here today with two items consecutively, one of them Area B, which already received preliminary approval. We went back with your comments to subcommittee on July 8th, and we decided to come back to kind of formalize it, do an in-progress review with you. We'll go ahead and start with that, and then we'll follow with Area C for preliminary approval. So I'll turn it over to Mark. Okay, so we're going to briefly look at um, B, because there were some comments that we addressed after the preliminary approval um, <laughs> subcommittee. We want to, there's a few of them, I want to make it brief, but we, we, Alex had mentioned that he'd like to see this pedestrian stair added back onto the Paseo to Helena Avenue, and so we did that. So it's now part of the, the project. Um, there were a few comments about simplifying the elevation some more. <clears throat> Can you see it? Okay. And working on plant material. Here's the stair back in elevation. Um, we had studied simplifying the uh, south elevation some more by simplifying the colonnade, not making the columns, uh, making them integral with the flush with the wall, um, just making the general massing a little bit simpler. And the subcommittee felt a lot more comfortable with that. I think Robert Adams had couple comments about the plant material that we spec to make sure it drapes over the site walls. These were originally stone. Um, people felt that they were too complicated and too expensive and just didn't add anything to the building, so we went to plaster with careful planting on those site walls. And then we focused on a few of the architectural details, which we had a whole sheet of and just to kind of clarify you know, certain elements of the design, I think it was Don who commented on some of the, the Munton arrangements, which we fixed on the elevations, and also he commented on the Mirador not being the proper proportion, so we shrunk it and changed the Muntons to be more old-fashioned. Um, we presented these details, which helped to begin to describe what we're really talking about in terms of all the extra architectural details. We're thinking about doing the stenciling underneath the eaves above on the higher elements. This is a quick sketch of how that, that may happen. Um, more definition on exactly what the corbels look like under the underneath the eaves. Some of the simpler plaster eaves. Also, um, there were some conversations about the um, elevator towers and exactly how that was detailed, so we defined that more thoroughly, showing the setbacks and exactly how the, uh, the tile work was done on the uh, finial on top. Uh, this was the mirror door I spoke about, where we shrank it and studied the proportions of the steel Munton windows. Um, we we um, got into more detail in our on our three arches that face um, the street on Helena Avenue and showing how they work and how the ceiling has um, wood beams. So we, you'll see that from below on Helena Avenue, which we thought was nice. We cut three sections through the uh, covered entry on Mason Street, which begin to show you exactly what we're thinking there as well with the cornices, um, the width and the height, possibly a nice... Um, elaborate Spanish chandelier over the entry. Again, we're going with, we're not going with coffered ceilings or vaulted ceilings, we're going with a simple um, flatter, tighter beams, wood beams in the ceilings. <clears throat> Just have to say about that. This is a detail showing the, the deck arrangement as you face the south, on the south side of the building overlooking the parking lot at Mountain Air Sports. And just how we detail it, we're thinking about a cast concrete grill system that's within a plaster wall that would, be, that would be painted. So it's very solid, provides privacy for the folks on the deck. And then a, a wood trellis that's attached to the building, detailed like this, and then large potted plants that would, would be maintained so that we can grow some um, plant material on the trellises as well. Um, a few of the, uh, beginning to develop a few of the cornices, the belt course, detailing shown here and um, some of the uh, door surrounds. <clears throat> so the uh, subcommittee seemed happy with this and uh, wanted us to just come back to, to show it to you guys and to get, I think, those, those lists checked off. I think they were 
comments that carried along with the preliminary approval last time. So that's why we're showing it to you. Mm -hmm. okay. There's more detailing to do, of course, but that will be done in working drawings. Do they need to make a motion on that, Melissa, or just see it? And this is in process. I do have a question, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let's go back to the site plan of the courtyard for a second. Mm -hmm. I just need some clarification. Okay, so you have a diamond pattern. What's going on with the paving well, there? Kim actually has a very. Um, is it in the sets? Yeah, I think she is. You mean this, right? Yes. Yeah, that's on. That's just the architectural sheet, Robert. And we have a, a, a much more detailed lab, which we went over very thoroughly with. Yeah, I think you saw. I'm just that curious about that. the. That's an Ashlar yeah. stone. That's mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. That's correct. The Cherokee. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here's the construction. Remember we detail. talked about that. I got you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So. Thank you. Okay. Done. Okay. Let's see, can we go back? Okay, moving so on. So we've moved on to item number eight. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are we doing? This one is a preliminary review. This okay. is for preliminary approval, hopefully, after we met with the subcommittee. There were comments from our last meeting. Then we met with the subcommittee again to iron out some of the HLC comments and get into more detail and um, they recommended they thought it was ready for you guys to see it again. So. And did you want something from this committee about item number seven in which you were talking about I mean you didn't none of us said anything. I think that'd be good. <laughs> I, I think we like to like to have you acknowledge that we did those changes and <laughs> <laughs> we weren't sure if you wanted to combine yeah. your comments for both. Well, there are two uh, different or, items, yeah. and I mean, the two different to, levels, yeah. right? Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. just yeah. going to assume yeah. that, 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 yeah. that yeah. the commission very was places. very happy with the progress, the progress uh, of your area right. B, and that we're in, um, we're simpatico with our subcommittee in terms of what they're doing and saying with you. Okay. So <laughs> That's, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now moving, moving along to area C, which you guys remember. There were, there were various comments from the, um, the full board that we addressed at subcommittee. Um, some of that had to do with the detailing of the plaza area, mm. and Kim and Robert spent quite a, quite a bit of time discussing a lot of the landscaping here, so I'm going to let Kim address that at some point. But first, I'd like to talk about the architecture. We defined um, more about what was going on with the colonnade and also the cabanas that are above. And we have some nice details of the uh, steps as well. So I wanted to go to, let's see, the details. Okay. Just going to go to elevations if I can find it. We cut a section. And the Cavani is just to kind of clarify what was going on. And we had some discussions about signage, and one comment was to move some of the Paseo signage, which we had out here, into the actual uh, Paseo. So we've done that. Um, we had addressed comments from the HLC about previously about what really are those finials? You know, they seem too massive and too too big, and this and that, and so. We spent some time and really got into it and sketched up a finial that we thought was appropriate, which was thinner and more elegant. Um, the subcommittee seemed to like that or understand that as well, as well as some of the, the handrail iron detailing. <clears throat> also, they asked us to provide more information about the colonnade. And I spent some time and looked at the uh, colonnade on the El Paseo on that campus street just to see what. Mary Craig, I think, Mary did that. Um, what she had done, it's interesting. Her, her, it's amazing when you go to look at it, you think it's all the same, but actually every opening is slightly different, which is kind of cool. So we decided, we added a little bit more detail to the arches, so they're kind of they're cut in around around, this, around the arch portion of it. We're alternating um, a recessed panel, as well as adding a, a base to each column. So the 
colonnade isn't just a basic plaster colonnade. It's got a little bit of style to it and detail. Also studied, again, we're reintroducing, which is consistent with the whole project, which is part of what Don mentioned, I think, a long time ago. Try to keep some of the detailing consistent. We're still going with the flatter beams in terms of the ceiling down the colonnade. One um, subcommittee um, person suggested that we study the entrances to the cabanas a little bit more. We had these four-foot plaster walls. And so we did this sketch to show that, this is a little bit confusing, but it shows a plaster wall in the foreground with an arched wood gate with panels. And then we have some plaster finials to either side of the gate, which we've added, and with a, a tile detail around the entrance. So it's decorative tile. So it has a little bit more of a Santa Barbara feeling. I think before it felt a little bit too contemporary to uh, some of the some of the members. And moving back to the getting back to some of the other comments um, about the elevations. We were asked to study um, certain aspects of the elevations, primarily this is the, whole, this is the State Street elevation. Um, on the State Street elevation, we had indicated that we were going to have a mechanical well in plan, but we hadn't shown it in elevation yet. So this is a mechanical well that's basically back behind these two end gables. I don't think you'll even see it from the ground level. It has an arched entry, which is open air to this upper um, corridor. This, this um, parapet is back maybe 20 feet from the edge of, of the roof, and it has some of our mechanical equipment in it. We were also asked to take a look at the tower, which we simplified. Uh, Don had asked us to do that, so we studied how this little cornice works relative to these windows, and we were asked to actually narrow, take our study narrowing these windows, and we had an arch top that seemed fussy, so we eliminated that. So we've, these drawings show those, those changes. Um, we studied the height of these arches along Mason Street and reduced them. And if we go to the, this is the, let's see what it's like, okay, Lena Elevation. <coughs> One of the other comments was to simplify some of the massing that, that was occurring back here on the Lena Elevation as well as this mechanical room. So this elevation, which this sub subcommittee was happy with, is the simplified version of what we used to have. There's less ins and outs, ups and downs, bigger, simpler. And uh, the subcommittee seemed happy with that as well. We have... So this is another section that actually shows, I think, this elevator tower was taller before we were asked to study that. We actually lowered it. We were able to lower it and simplify it. So um, that's a change. We also added a planter. There's an, there's an open space on this upstairs paseo where we added a planter in the corner, which we can see in plan, which I think will help with this restaurant space on the, the second floor. I think Don had mentioned that we had two chimneys here that this chimney went down flush as well as this one, so they're almost too similar, and we like the asymmetry. As he suggested pushing this back and grabbing back this tile line so there's more of an asymmetrical quality about the elevation, so we've made that change as well. Just a moment. Is this the combined elevation you just showed us, but it had a, yes. an arched gate? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So that's the difference? And it lowers right. down to a little planter. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just ask a brief question. Uh, when does Zorro make it? Uh, <laughs> He's appearing on all of our projects lately. I thought so. <laughs> I'm not to rob any tourists, though. <laughs> um, and again, we, we thought it would be appropriate at this point to bring in some of our thinking um, relative to the details. This is a little tile detail that we're alluding to on the entrance to the cabanas where we'll have a hand painted room number and a it might not be a Moroccan tile in this situation. I might use something more on Spanish. Um, there's a finial on the Helena side of uh, Helena and Mason side of the uh, ridge, which is detailed more elaborately here. The nice wrought iron wind vane on top that's operable, of course. Um, one of our plaster cornices 
that doesn't come out very far compared to B. It's slightly different than B where we have the big two foot overhanging um, eaves. Here we're going with this not super simple but relatively simple um, shaped cornice with triple stack tile in the end and we're going to explore the idea of extending extending one or two tiles out proud of it just to get the cool look, that old fashioned look. Um, there's a sketch here of the uh, steel eyebrow or actually aluminum eyebrow that's painted that goes over the commercial area on the corner to shade the entries. This is similar in general to what uh, Brian and I did on the Bank and Trust and also on uh, Restoration Hardware. They have a version of that, which I think is a bit heavy on Restoration Hardware, but I'd like to lighten that up a little bit and make it more delicate. Is that the same basket weave you're talking about? It's similar. This one has supports because it's actually wider. Um, here's a section through the Paseo Stair where we're interested in using flagstone, of course, with an inch and three-quarter inch toe, so it's nice and thick. Very much like the courthouse steps. Um, it's two foot steps, six, in six inches tall, and then there's like a, a mow course, which was suggested by the subcommittee as well, that flushes out with our native lawn, which Ken will talk about in a minute. Um, yeah. What's that big pot? What is that? Like it's glazed a, pot? That's a glazed pot. And how does that drain? There's a hole in the back, actually, Robert, that we drilled so that the water goes back into the courtyard. There's a private courtyard. We may not have pots. We're just kind of talking so about So that's ceramic. This. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got it. Okay, thank you. Um, there's, a, there's an area on the elevation on Mason Street, if we can go back to that for a moment. which is right here, which has a little bit of wrought iron. So we went ahead and just showed you a detail of what we're thinking for that. Not too elaborate, simple straight bar and a twist, um, painted. Oh, it's just inch. a ball. Yeah. <laughs> That's the legal deal. A couple um, hanging pots and the simple brackets underneath. Not too fancy, a kind of gotten into it with a more simple looking wrought iron. I think it's this class here. Um, again, a basket weave under. Um, this is the swooped sill that was suggested we study um, on the tower element on the corner. And then on the Cabana Ray, uh, railroad track side, or the, that'd be the northern side, we have the scalloped parapet tile detail. So a few details, not all of them, of course, but I think it helps give you guys the feeling of where we're coming from in terms of the 30s old school Santa Barbara Mediterranean detail. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Kim to chat about the landscaping. So as, as um, recommended at the last meeting, we've had some discussions with the city arborist, Tim Downey, regarding the jacaranda trees on State Street. And there are um, some existing jacarandas on this property and across the street, and it was his feeling that they would do okay here. Um, and as long as we give them sufficient space to grow, that's that they're an acceptable species for this for this location this, um, on State Street. Another request, and we've added to this plan, is that the trees on this on the property line here will be maintained by the project owner, and so that will be 
something that will be carried through with the plans to make it clear that, that it's the responsibility of the owner. And we've also studied how these tree wells will work in conjunction with the garage below and discussed using structural soils. And so we've been studying those details and feel really comfortable um, with our discussions with the arborist and some of the, the discussions we've had with the team that these trees will, will be okay in this location. And I think um, the, the other couple items that we wanted to talk about um, in regards to the, the jacarandas are, is, is the feeling that we're trying to create um, on that portion of State Street. And here at the top are some photographs of the jacarandas. It's the double ali of jacarandas on State Street up at um, La Arcata. And it's just, it's a really nice, very charming feeling. And it's, again, helping to create that closure to the courtyard, make the space very inviting, comfortable, um, a nice pedestrian scale. So again, here we see what it might look like in the front of the project as you're walking, as you're walking down, how, how the, the trees will open up, create that canopy, make that welcoming entry. And I know there were some concerns with, with, with the height and the scale. And again, you can see these trees aren't, really blocking views. They're, they're just really enhancing, I think, the, the feeling of the space. Um, we also had got, went around town and discussed this with the, with the subcommittee, Look, looking at instances where, where there are some stone steps adjacent to lawn in Santa Barbara. And this is the, the detail at the, stone, at the courthouse. And here we see it again at the new Chase Palm Park extension where there's that nice lawn and the steps go down. So our situation would be almost reversed. The steps would go up to the lawn and you'd have that alley of trees. So this is very similar to what, what the, the feeling would be. And here we're seeing the blue grama grass um, up at the Santa Barbara Botanic Garden. And this is an example of photograph of it installed on one of Susan Van Atta's projects in Santa Barbara. So it has been used here. This installation's been up at the garden for a while. And Robert and I did have some email correspondence regarding this grass, some other options. Um, did some, you know, I feel like I did some research talking to experts and, and I, I feel comfortable saying that this is a really viable option to, and it would work on this site. And regarding the um, the feeling of this grass, it is a more na it's a native grass. It's more natural. You can let it go longer. It has less mowing, so it's going to give that softer, finer character rather than that hard edge that I know was a concern. So it does it does have it has a really beautiful, really nice, soft character to it, and 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 it's extremely drought tolerant. Yeah. And I have done the water calcs on that, and I'd be happy to share that information. Yeah, I mean. Uh I, I think it reduces significantly the amount of water you're supposed to put on this species. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, what, what we found here, there, there's two, two calculations I've done. And the first one we're seeing, if you look at the different types of lawns, fescue, a native ceramoglass, or a uh, seashore pass fallen, given this square footage, this is the, the water use per year. And then when you back off the rainwater, we're looking at, at quite a savings um, going with the native grass. And we have the native grass would use um, 39,000 gallons less than what would be a law allowed per ordinance. So for the 20% of lawn that this project would be allowed per ordinance, um, we're, we're still using almost 40,000 gallons less. And I think it used what a, a regular turf would use 101,000 gallons, this lawn would use 30. So it's, it's a significant amount of, of savings for water. We all went up to look at it at the path of gardens, and it has a nice blue-green color to it. It doesn't look dry or, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, did you throw ice on it? No. <laughs> That's the buffalo Question. grass. Uh -huh. <laughs> Doesn't like ice, apparently, <laughs> of all things. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. um, so those were the, the main points that we discussed with the subcommittee and feel that we have some, we came to an agreement on those, so we wanted to come back and, and run it past you all for your feedback. And, 
Well, that would like to conclude, I think, our presentation. I don't think mm -hmm. we have anything else to add. And um, again, we're seeking preliminary approval on area C. Okay. Is there any public comment on this? Seeing none, are there questions from the commission? And I'm, I'm, I do have a question. Um, I may have missed a meeting or two somehow. Did we approve this conceptually? This landscape? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Where was I? Okay. I must not have been here. Um, are there any comments? Um, yeah, I, I want to say that, um, you know, one thing we wanted to look at as far as this, I'm just going to just dis discuss the plaza space for now. Um, one of the things we were looking at was we didn't want to uh, approve a project that's really going to be a maintenance night nightmare for future owners, users, things like that. So <clears throat> we have to be uh, cautious. The first thing I want to mention is I'm very glad that they worked with the um, with the uh, Parks and Rec staff to just to check out their the jacaranda trees, and that's going to work just great. And then um, they did they did do research. Um, remember this. This lawn area is over parking, and so the amount of moisture is key not only for water use but just for drainage and leakage issues, things like that. So um, um, this, this, I think, is going to be the, the first public trial of blue grama grass uh, in, in this town in a big public open space like this outside of the botanic garden. And uh, it could really set the pace for what people use. It has a meadow effect. You you do not have to mow it half as much or or uh, put fertilizer on it. So, you know, um, again, I think this is a good trial, um, and I, I think the research has been done. It's it's time for Santa Barbara to try this. We looked at other, all kinds of the applicant looked at all kinds of other grasses. So. Uh, but this is the one that you really has the kind of meadow character uh, we were hoping for, and uh, the kind of the less water use, a, a very key issue. So it's not going to be a typical giant lawn. It's going to be more like a, a, a meadow, and the color is mainly blue green. And uh, if if this works, it's really going to set the pace for what how people can use it, and it takes uh, foot traffic. Not maybe not a lot, but it takes foot traffic. And, and I have here an example of how turf is ex installed on a green roof, which also helps with when you have foot traffic. A lot of the problem is compaction of the root zone, and with this sort of system, you're not having that type of compaction. And you have the roots actually underneath the system, growing on a moisture mat. Mm -hmm. And you know there, there's some examples from all over the world where lawn is going in on buildings you know chicago is probably the most famous area millennium park where they have lawn and and it is easier in, in terms of foot traffic and damage to the root system it's essentially a green roof mm -hmm. in a way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so there's the moisture barrier and so there are there's several layers of waterproofing and you know, as we had said before, this is probably going to be a key component to the water filtration for the water quality component to this site. And this is going to help us with that filtration portion. Thank you. Yes. Speaking for the subcommittee, um, we know that not all subcommittees are the same. And some are easier to work than others. And I think uh, we were very happy working with this group. Uh, they were very responsive. They didn't do exactly everything we asked for, but they put forward good reasons for not to do it, which is, you know, as a matter of fact, we wanted softer edges on the, on the grass, and, you know, they presented something else, and they convinced us, and we're happy with what we see. So also, that, I might add, as part of the subcommittee, that we talked about signage being inside the arcade here, similar to what is done twice inside and outside at El Paseo but only having signage on the inside and similar mm -hmm. type of obviously brackets and so forth and and not plaster the buildings with a lot of mm -hmm. signage yeah, it's less than a lot. which is very very important in this particular building 
You may want to have a director sign for the project. Right, we talked about signage and how, depending on what, who owns it and who uses it, we'll develop a full signage program at that point. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But keep it low key. We're thinking the hand painted in the very it's Santa Barbara. Like the and, yeah. Like the courthouse. Mm -hmm. I, I do have to leave in five minutes. So I, I asked this question because I, and I'm glad you brought this up about that you had asked about the lawn area being softer edged, and I, I do have concerns about how hard edged and shopping mall, I'm sorry, <laughs> this feels mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to hear the reasons why it does have to be so hard edged. And well, but didn't you imply that? From the uh, applicant's perspective, it's just the look. So if, if the, uh, as opposed to the, uh, uh, let's say, the um, sunken gardens that have they have walls that do something, and then you have a softer pl uh, some planting. Well, what they they came with a, a softer grass. It's not it's not the shopping center grass they, they, to begin with. It's not that hard look. I think it's how you do the hardscape too. You know this. The stair detail is supposed to be rather rustic and not. Oh, no, I, yeah, you know, I saw not the images. Finished. you got to yeah. speak in the mic. Yeah. The, uh, the actual edge of the steps are going to be chipped and rustic. It's going to be probably Cherokee Creek sandstone or flagstone. So it has that mm -hmm. rustic feel, you know, varying grout width. So it has that courthousey, more old school feel to it, which I think is really important. I think combined with the olive trees here, it's just not that big a space either. And I liked. I like the sense of enclosure that I think Alex liked that as well, that the jacaranda trees implied on State Street. Um, it's really just a calm, not trying to make a big deal out of it or a giant statement out of it, um, space. I think it's successful just being simple and I think it has the ability, as we explained maybe a couple of times ago too, have the different uses, you know, overlay over it. We talked about, you know, boarding up the fountain and having this be a stage for some kind of a small event here. The restaurants can spill out and overlook it while, you know, people are having dinner, the kids can run around the lawn. I mean, that's sort of the idea we have, sort of a multi-use multi, multi -use space. And um, we like the simplicity of it. I always love that when I drive by the courthouse, even though it's a much grander scale, has a nice simplicity to it as well, as well as Delegare Plaza. When I drive by Delegare Plaza, it has that not trying to make a big deal out of itself. It's a simple lawn, and that's that's the design intent that we're going for. I think it's all about how this feels, too, around it. Yeah, and I appreciate your explanation. I do have problems with it, but mm -hmm. I'm going to be a lone voice, clearly, about my perception of what it feels like. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate the fact that you brought the images. I, I do understand your intent with the steps. And um, I, that was my, so um, I'm sorry, Don, but I have to leave. Um, <laughs> that, that would be the too much. You know, I, I got I to gotta jump on those comments, too, because I, I actually would, feel a little bit the way that you do. The edge of the flagstone is so clean on one side where the olives are. I think there could be an opportunity to do interesting things, to spill some succulents. Low-rooted, I know you're over a roof or whatever, but I think there's an opportunity. To me, it's, I, I, I like most of the edges, but the part I like the least is what's going around the olives. And I understand your intention. It's a nice flow to it. But what we're missing is some texture. What what I think helps this project is the fact that Blue Grandma is a very interesting texture. It is not necessarily a grass color. It's much more blue than that. It has interesting flower heads, so it will give a meadow appearance. But I, too, would, again, think that the, 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 the clean edge over on the olives is, you know, is not... not not the greatest solution in my mind, but it's not a deal killer either. I think what helped this was the texture of the blue grandma for me, and I'm glad that that worked out because just plain lawn, I'm not sure I could have done. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. um, is the lawn flush with the with the stone? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. And that's, I, I think that is a 
You have a great health. I, it's I nice to you too. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sorry, but uh, my, my comment will be that I You're out of here. The, <laughs> <laughs> the subcommittee and, and you all have worked very well together. And it's a pleasure to see the details and where you're here. Thanks, Suzanne. Thank Thanks. you. All righty. Um, well, that's kind of where we stand. I have one, one comment. I, uh, I'd like to tell you. Um, the, see, the subcommittee. I had a, a comment on the on the walls, on the uh, the cabana walls, mm -hmm. and you did a nice detail on eight. Mm -hmm. What is it? Ten, eight hundred, whatever it was. Uh, yeah. yeah, that one there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think what may may look a little bit odd is, is, is this uh, top surface. I'm talking about the wall being like that. You know, doesn't want to make a big deal. Uh, oh, it's that big. It's, it's going to be at least ten inches. Okay. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, that that so might change it. Yeah, the, like I would never get do the skinny. You know, so it's like an adobe wall kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. Has that feel to it? Oh, okay. Oh, least, that's okay. Yeah. That's important, I hear you. It needs to have that substantial feel to it. We're on questions, right? No. Still? Commenting. Or are we commenting? Commenting. Okay. Further comments? Um, yeah, I just want to say the pot on where you do the tile, lose the pot. Let the tile... No, we yeah, we're not proposing a pot. Mm -hmm. No pot. Okay, great. Because um, the tile does it. It's, mm -hmm. it's enough. Yeah. I think that other drawing kind of spells that out for you a little bit. This one is the blow up of that one section where we just have a little slope top to drain and that's it. No pots are indicated. But we're making the gate a little bit more interesting. The gate's got an arch and maybe we'll do like an OG, you know, uh, routed front to these wood gates. So the gates would be substantial. Nice base detail as well. It's not just flush with the ground. So a little bit more, a little softer. So, Matt, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Bougeot. I will make a motion for preliminary approval with uh, maybe uh, we'll review details on some kind of a next, mm -hmm. uh, how do you call it? A, um, a, 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 a indefinite continuance to some subcommittee future, a subcommittee meeting in the future for to review details, mm -hmm. no, and then the final will be will be for the full board. I just want to say, and this is a concern. I th I think it still should be explored. A low succulent texture coming out of the olives. I think that could be looked at and improved in a very interesting way. Still having flow, but I think that should be looked at and. And studied. So we can make that uh, another comment. Motion, right? But, um, Repeat is, that for me, would you? So aren't okay. we? I, I, I think over on the olive edge of the lawn, that should be studied. If you have a rusticness, it should be studied where there's a, a low texture other than a grass texture that integrates with the lawn. To to soften that edge, just a little transition bit between. The olives and the lawn. Exactly. Yes. That needs to be seriously looked at because there was great concern on Suzette's part, and I share the very same concern. May I ask a clarification? Are we doing, or are you drafting a motion for preliminary approval with the following comments? Yes. Okay. To be addressed. Okay. Well, we'd be happy to study that, Robert. I mean, we can take a look at that. So the motion is for preliminary approval with. With Some few comments. comments. With comments. Mm -hmm. I'd be happy to second. Yeah. And I, uh, the, that's the motion. The motion is for preliminary approval. Mm -hmm. Motion and second. And are there any other comments other than Robert's comments of softening the transition between the olives and the lawn with some additional low planting against? the olive walls. Mm -hmm. 
All right. I also, I also want to make positive comments for working with this team. It's been a great process, not only with the architectural team, but with our fellow commissioners. It's been a great process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in no large part, that's due to the talent on this board and the talent of the architectural and landscape architectural team. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All in favor of the motion for preliminary approval say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Uh, preliminary aye. approval granted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> is, is there a second? Yeah. Oh, okay. Red meeting adjourned. <laughs>